we get into the psychological warfare operation kneeling during the national anthem and then the more recent kind of faux controversy about the so-called black national anthem which the right wing miscalls it but the idea here is that that is a contentious thing in itself yeah the baltimore bridge opened in 77 it says fred so it's like 47 years old okay now here we go um we're just kind of going to gloss over a few things, but 1.6 miles long, collapsed in the early morning. We've all seen the pictures. Now, the ship is called Dolly, and this stood out for a few reasons. The name of the ship, because in our analysis, we're always looking at these things as props. So what would Dolly mean here? Well, for one, it's surreal, but there may be more. Uh, we already have a lot of people throwing in their theories about what happened, what caused it. Uh, breaking video footage captures the moment when a container ship collision causes the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge on I-695 in Baltimore. Multiple power loss. Yeah, we saw the power going off. It seemed like it was two or three times. 128. Now you have the Dremetria trolls out there. And I'm sorry to say it like that, but we'll see on 4.8. I see a lot of connections that are being forced into this thing, and they're not all that useful because they're using multiple calendars or calculators, excuse me. I'm like, okay, well, we'll look at this thing holistically and look at what's there. So it did hit at 128. Are there any significant meanings to that? Well, 128 is the date that Leave the World Behind was released. So there is that on Netflix, December the 8th. Uh, 128 would be the date of the Challenger explosion. I mean, that's kind of interesting, but moving on here, it was plain decoded. He said, leave the world behind. A ship crashes. This is on Netflix, 12-8. And the movie in featured a ship called the White Lion. And so the White Lion significance is that it's a, it references the arrival of the first slaves, the transatlantic slave trade, 1619. And the theme of the movie is about this reckoning that America is about to pay for its real past, its sins. That 1776 is not the starting point, but rather it glosses over what preceded it. And that which preceded it is going to resurface at some point. So the ship called the White Lion with the 1619 connected to it. In the movie, they have the emergency broadcast on 1619. So it's like connected there automatically 1619 white lion ship it loses its power big power outage and it crashes into the shore now it's an oil tanker which would also allude to environmentalism and what is bringing about the death of the west you know capitalism pollution overuse of fossil fuels drilling for oil so this is Gaia's revenge as well that's kind of tied into it so but you connect these things environmentalism has been connected with the leftist critique of America, critical race theory, critical um, of America as this intrinsically, I guess, structurally racist thing, but also that includes environmentalism, which disproportionately affects the poor, and it's a side effect of capitalism, which is exploitative in itself. So in other words, they've merged uh, communism and environmentalism. You could say environmentalism is just a stalking horse for this other political and economic system. You know, watermelon Marxism, green on the outside, red on the inside. But these things are connected. So we have the connection with the White Lion. The grounding of the ship White Lion and Leave the World Behind serves as a metaphorical omen of America's past wrongdoing and vulnerability. Symbols, signs, and omens are reoccurring themes in the movies, emphasizing the need for characters to pay attention to warnings. Now, one other point here. This is a reference to Leave the World Behind. It's a metaphorical omen of America's past wrongdoings and vulnerability. Well, a couple of things, actually. Uh, one, in the movie, they show a map of America with a big X through it with a list of all the bad things America has done. It's this work of art, and we're about to reach the eclipse where America gets X'd. But two, it says it's a, an omen, like it's metaphorical. And what would you say about a bridge called Francis Scott Key, you know, the author of the national anthem? How metaphorical you know, could you possibly be? I mean, you couldn't be any more metaphorical, rather, than just to have a boat hitting that particular thing. It sends a message, especially right now. This time, 
when we're preparing for the Civil War movie to come out, AG, his movie 20, his movie, uh, the Civil War movie that's coming out is going to be, I imagine, taken apart just like Leave the World Behind was. That people are already expecting it to be full of predictive programming and messaging. But Civil War is going to be out here in just a few weeks. But to get back to this, now why are we looking at everything and referencing Leave the World Behind? Because that movie contain copious predictive programming, concurrent programming, uh, foreshadowing, and it's been consistently referenced by mass media because the public are referencing it. This is by design. This is a closed system. This is how they create hyperstitions. This is how they reinforce their fake narratives by having them reflected back to us through the media. It's a closed system. My point being, of course, this is all by design. They want you to have that as a frame of reference because it's preparing you for what they're going to do on the news. They fake the news, but they prepare you first with re repeating the messages and giving you the stories, getting you to take sides in advance. And it's always interconnected. There's nothing mystical about it. It's politically targeted messaging. You know, I like to reference specific examples because it shows you that this is the human hand at work, and this is all political. For example, when Roe v. Wade had leaked, there was this controversy. And, of course, the women's rights activists were activated because Roe v. Wade, women's autonomy, these things were all thrown into, into the balance. And then all of a sudden, there's a new movie out, a new series out on HBO, the new Game of Thrones. And I'm like, okay, I'm done with politics for the time being. I'm going to watch Game of Thrones. And it opens up to a scene where the queen dies giving birth against her will, but they needed the child because it's a male, and she's just a broodmare for the state, even though she's the most powerful woman in the country. So the whole point of it was reinforcing the political news, the political narratives, giving the viewers a visceral understanding of what it means to have barbaric men deciding the fate of women, taking away their autonomy. And this was Game of Thrones, which had been written, produced, and filmed way before the Roe v. Wade leak. So how do you explain that timing? And I can point to, you know, 500 examples. So again, we're looking at a propaganda in film, in movies, that prepares you to accept things. It even opens the Overton window. It puts things into the area of discourse. Like, nobody was talking about planes falling from the sky. Nobody was talking about civil war in, in these specific ways until they present it in the movies first. Nobody was talking about uh, blackouts and cyber attacks and, until this movie. And now it's all we're talking about. But let's continue. Secret Sun pointed this out. The ship is called Dolly, hits Francis Scott Key outside Port Baltimore. Salvador Dolly had a painting called The Broken Bridge and the Dream. Now, these might seem like specious or weak connections or random, but you'll see. We're taking a holistic look here and thinking in terms of the collective psyche. What is everyone's collective frame of reference? We're not picking obscure films. We're picking things that are highlighted, that are put out there where they're unignorable. It's the reason why we even focused on Taylor Swift before the Super Bowl. They make these things unignorable when they're pushing a psychological operation. And the Pentagon said, Taylor Swift's not a PSYOP, which... Obviously, that was part of the PSYOP. Yeah, built in 77, the Key Bridge, named after the author of the American National Anthem. It's 47 years old, built in 77. Maybe some significance to that. I have a link here to a video by uh, Fake Nukes Phil, who suggests that this is a controlled demolition, which is what my initial take on it was. Fakeologist says, more like a developing PSYOP, what's the chain of custody for the bridge video footage? It's probably fake, just like the 9-11 plane footage. See, that's entirely possible, too. I don't operate on the assumption that the MSM, that the screen, is giving us the truth, and then we can figure out if they're telling lies after we accept the basic premise. I don't even accept what's on the screen as evidence. I subtract from it until I can verify it. I suspend judgment. I step away from the screen. That's why I call it MSM minus. We're on the other side of the screen. The conspiracy theorists who dive in and start looking for who did it. Was it China? Was it India? They start coming up with theories. Was it Chinese space lasers? 
I call them MSM plus because they go beyond the oh it's just an accident like on TV and they dive into the deeper narrative threads that say no it's real but it's way worse the media is covering it up and I'm saying no it's not as bad as that actually it's not even as bad as the telegraph I mean the televised version Shannon Jones says got my book looks great excellent job oh thank you very much thank you for your patience there uh, hardbacks have been going out I just ran to the post office and sent out another one just a moment ago okay but let's get back on track here I have a ton of notes to get through and then we can take calls if anyone has anything else so Mike Rothschild says foreshadowing by whom for what purpose and with two incidents that aren't all that similar now th this is a back and forth we've been having but basically what I've explained to him because I've been pointing this out since that movie came out I've been pointing to things concurrent with that movie the planes the, the recurring themes that we're not talking about the Obamas doing something they're the producers of this film but this is much wider and this is kind of outside of his box so he won't be able to understand it uh, he's what I would call MSM his mindset his frame of reference so we're looking at frames Mike Rothschild is a conspiracy critic so he's MSM and he criticizes the MSM plus those who have additional theories about what really happened what we're proffering here is a skeptical approach and it's outside of his his purview and he's not even aware as we are that there are these different frames like there's I call it you know woke town trutherville and normieville and each one has its own set of presuppositions and from our perspective looking at this thing holistically and including what we know to be true which is psychological operations perception management media fakery when we include that it actually takes us outside of their box and from this perspective we can see that no actually news and entertainment are part of a monolithic mind war operation and it's being executed globally because there's only one government and he's not going to want to even approach that but that is the only um, underlying I think thing that you have to accept to understand this that this is unified it's monolithic 9-11 proves it the space program proves it the fact that the partisan psyops aren't called out the people on the right aren't like hey the left wings running psyops to take our guns they would expose these things as hoaxes but instead there's there they back off away from these things they don't expose each other's hoaxes so this is outside of Mike Rothschild's box is my point he's not going to understand it but the best explanation for predictive programming is this repetitive messaging to shape your expectations to make you suggestible for what they're planning to do on the news later that's all they're greasing the skids boring the neuro pathways and they've been doing this forever because they write the news advance in advance and they execute it on the world stage this is how they control us you know past present future We also have another story of P. Diddy running away like O.J. And there's even a video where he gets on a plane and, and it looks like the O.J. scene. He's being chased by police, foreshadowing. We may get into that. It could just be more um, distraction. We'll see. Now, I don't know if anybody has looked into this. Igor Petrov said, I've studied Mothman since I came into the U.S. in 1993. The Baltimore, Maryland bridge incident was a man-made accident, nothing to do with Mothman. I thought that's a random comment, nothing to do with Mothman. But I looked into it, and apparently there is something about Mothman. December 15, 1967, something about a bridge that collapsed, 46 people died. This was in West Virginia. And during this time, people were being inundated with sightings of the Mothman. And this article here is about narrative hijacking, Mothman, and the Silver Bridge Collapse. So even before the internet, people were taking news stories and kind of doing it themselves, like making their own news about it. So this Mothman, urban myth, legend, panic took over. And so the connection here, Mothman prophecy, with this bridge, I don't really see it. But it's a fascinating side note. Here's some weirdness, and I can see why people think we're in a simulation sometimes. We have, of course, this thing with Kate Middleton and the weird bench thing. And then we have this video of Megan the Duchess of Sussex 
reading a children's book she wrote called The Bench. And it looks just like the bench. House Friars. Looks just like the bench that Kate Middleton is sitting on that people think is some kind of AI construct. So here. Hi, and welcome to Brightly Storytime. I'm Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, and today I'm going to read to you my book called The Bench. The Bench. I'm not going to bore you with it, but just weirdness. Okay, Michael Letts on Twitter says, In the end, the real author of the script is God. We must endure and overcome. And I disagree. I would call that a divine fallacy. Which God? Who's, who's writing this thing? Is it the one from the Abrahamic faiths? Is it, is it um, the Christian version of God? Is it Allah? Is it some kind of in-between? Is it Buddha? Who's writing the scripts? I think we need to be more specific, but also I think that the instant you say God's doing it, you rule out man. And I've been saying this for some time, we can't be ruling out man so easily. For example, let's just say that all computer hacking now on, from now on, if a computer gets hacked, it was gremlins. Okay, well then I guess we can try to work on how to keep gremlins away. But if we accept that premise, then computer hackers have carte blanche. They can just go out and do whatever they want because nobody's looking for them. Well, nobody's hunting down the metascriptors. Nobody's hunting crisis actors. Why? Because they don't believe in them. They've been given a false model. Okay, here we go. Moving on here. I've got some interesting bits of... Uh, we'll get into this later. I want to talk about this inconvenient reality. Bits of evidence about 9-11. Stuff that... Old news, but not all that new. I mean, I mean, not all that irrelevant. It's, it's kind of like... Here, here's something. Let me bring this one up. This was a rock... So there's a guy who had an apartment near Ground Zero, and rubble had just destroyed the area. His apartment had been destroyed, and he found this rock inside, a heart-shaped rock. And this thing had a Bible melted into it. And the person who made this video describes it as an inconvenient reality, when what you think you know is challenged by what you see. And he does a breakdown of the melting point of steel and how it would have to have uh, been a miracle for it to have created this heart-shaped um, base for a Bible and not even burn the pages. And then it's on a very specific Bible page that had this significance to it. But this guy's kind of debunking it and just raising the question, you know, what does this mean? You know, it's kind of like the petrified, moon ro petrified wood moon rocks. Like, these are inconvenient realities. And I like to just kind of keep a folder full of those things. Okay, so here we have Baltimore Bridge, 1.6 miles long. Alex Jones says uh, it's the start of World War, World War III. General Flynn is on there to say it's a black swan event. So if you know who General Flynn is, he's some kind of superhero to the QAnons. They love this guy. They want him to be Trump's VP. From the financial world. And he's suggesting that this is a black swan. World, right? Well, this, this actually will impact the financial world for sure. But these are events that happen that, you know, you just can't imagine that something like this is going to happen. There are ships that transit every port, harbor, bay, particularly the... Now, I can imagine this would happen because I've seen Leave the World Behind. And what fakeologists kind of threw out there, which is worth considering, do we even know this footage is what was actually going on at the time? Large ports like the Baltimore Harbor every single day, multiple times a day. And for something like this to happen, this complete violation of all standards and norms, they have a what's called a SOP, Standard Operating Procedures, that every single ship's captain has to go through prior to, prior to taking off from the dock itself, actually prior to getting on the ship. So everything that I see here, and, you know, I mean, the jury is going to be out for a while. You know, this is not... You know, I was asked earlier today, Alex, can we take the idea that this was a terrorist attack off the table? And absolutely, we cannot do that. So we cannot do that, he says. You know, Alex Jones said the, the thing in Crocus was a NATO attack, a false flag. They're always adding on. This is what I call MSM+. Plus. So they are building on the assumption that it happened as reported by the MSM. And I'm saying that is fundamentally flawed as a methodology. And it needs to stop, at least in Trutherville. 
we can back away from the screen at this point. Uh, we're getting too accurate in our predictions, um, in our reading of their narrative threads and where it's going to lead us, and reverse engineering these events, determining whether or not it's fabricated or not. It, it's not all that complicated these days. And, you know, I, I call the IPR, the Infinite Plane Radio, a fake news wood chipper. Okay, let's move on here. I want to get through all of the notes before we uh, get much further. I just got so much in the Discord server and the Gilded. Laura Logan on X said, Multiple Intel sources. Baltimore Bridge Collapse was a, quote, absolutely brilliant strategic attack on U.S. critical infrastructure, most likely cyber, and our intel agencies know it in infowar war terms. They just divided the U.S. among the Mason-Dixon line, exactly like the Civil War. Second busiest strategic roadway in the nation for hazardous materials now for five years, which is how long it will take to recover. The bridge was built specifically to move fuel, diesel, propane gas, nitrogen, flammable materials, chemicals, oversized cargo that cannot fit in the tunnels, and that is now crippled. So that's Laura Logan with a healthy dash of fear. Cohen Rugg says, Justin, officials stopped cars from crossing the Francis Scott Key Bridge moments before the cargo ship collided, saving lots of lives. According to Maryland Governor Wes Moore, the ship issued a mayday before colliding. Mayday, by the way, is a major league commie holiday. I believe it's the Church of Satan's New Year's, and it is the high point of the witch's calendar, Beltane. But, again, May Day. Um, this is interesting. So they were there before. It says the ship issued a May Day loss of power. Workers on the bridge halted traffic before the impact and saved lots of lives. So that's good news. No reason, though, in my opinion, to go on the assumption that this was a real event. And if it was a controlled demo, it would have been a closed set. Okay, moving on. This is a picture going around. It's Barack Obama in front of the White Lion and in front of Dolly. Again, I think Dolly's got to have some significance here. Dave J chimed in here, surprisingly sensible. The fact of the matter is, the bridge was closed for a controlled demo. Everything you see is fabrication and place setting. That so-called ship did not run into anything when it got into position. The bridge was taken down. Interesting take. Yeah, you know, that is an interesting take, because if they were staging this thing, they would not have taken chances. Like, let's hit this thing, and then bring it down. Like, what if they hit it, and it didn't fall? Then their entire operation would not have worked. Therefore, they probably had it rigged as a controlled demolition, and, you know, I'm not saying the boat was CGI, like, you know, planes are likely to be in certain situations, but I think it's safe to say that, yeah, this thing was rigged to go down in that manner. Synchro Morpheus said, I'm just catching up on the news about the bridge. I noticed something about the story. Active search and rescue posture. Interesting terminology. He's remarking on it here. Posture, to behave in a way intended to attract attention and interest. So I refer to these as then crisis posers. They're in costume. Okay, now here's a take from Twitter. I listened to WCBM this morning to see, and they were raising conspiracy theories. Things will be wild in the coming days and hours with the conspiracy folks. It's going to be a headache. Now, again, I think this is a positive development that a large swath of the population are just going to reject the, quote, official story whenever they pre present it. Now, here's your typical MSM+. Plus. You know that the story being fed to Normieville is fake. So what do you do? You, you just dive in, you go deeper. And here's, according to Alex Jones, deliberate to me, a cyber attack. World War III has officially started. And Andrew Tate says, the ship was cyber attacked. Lights go off and it deliberately steers toward the bridge supports. Foreign agents of the USA attack our digital infrastructures. So their take on it is that this ship was weaponized. But, yeah, I would even ask, raise a question. 
could one cargo ship do what this ship did to this 1.6 mile long bridge? Um, I think it's a perfectly valid question. I would say that maybe not. You know, can a plane take down a skyscraper? Um, depends. You know, um, are we talking about real life or are we talking about simulation? And in this case, this is a, you know, it's a, it's a special effect. Are we including special effects, in other words? Angle of elevation says, although that full cargo ship had a huge force behind it, even if going slow. Right. Yeah, still, I'm, I'm still trying to determine, you know, if I, if I find this believable, because there's even a few things about it I find questionable, but I'm just questioning that in particular. Like, could this have fallen without some kind of rigging across the board? And it did look like it fell pretty, it, it was like free fall speed, it fell into its own footprint, practically. It looked like it was WTC 7 Sigirl said to me, I hope you're not a spectator driving home across a bridge when they decide to accidentally destroy it because you'll be killed and no one will care. Everyone here will call it a hoax. Hey folks, if Tim Osmond dies in a suspicious accident, we have his permission to call it a media hoax. Especially if they make it look like an accident. Right. My response to that is simply that these aren't false flags. They're not like, hey guys, we're going to take out that Francis Scott Key Bridge, let's crash this cargo ship into it. Like, I don't think it would work that way. This isn't a James Bond movie. It would probably fail. So this was planned years in advance, decades, who knows how far in advance the newsbenders work. But if this is a key piece of infrastructure, a key piece of the narrative building, then there would be a lot of work going into this thing. And it would be a closed set, and nobody is going to be in harm's way. As Dave J said, nobody died, nobody cried. Echo Charlie says, get architects for truth on the phone. Yeah, exactly. Angle of Elevation says, if the ship was cyber hacked, wouldn't there be evidence of that? Yeah, I think we should call, is it Dr. Judy Woods about the space lasers? Maybe it was space lasers. It's surreal, like a dolly. Mike Rothschild said, that's not hap what happens in Leave the World Behind. The freighter grounds on the beach. It doesn't hit a bridge. Okay, now again, I want to get into the, my response to this. Uh, predictive programming operates in both specifics to give you visuals, but also themes. So we have the theme of hacking. Uh, and that's what happened. The white lion in the movie was hacked, lost its power, crashed into the beach. We're talking about symbolism. White lion, about America's reckoning its past coming back, and the underclass, the poor, the lower class, the environmentalist climate justice agenda, it's all packed in there. And now we're looking at something similar, but happening to a bridge connected to the national anthem, which is hugely significant. So in that sense, no, these are very significant. And then also, we're talking about propaganda. I'm addressing Mike Rothschild. We're talking about propaganda addressing the collective psyche. The people who watched the Obama movie are intended to make these comparisons. So they're not just going to look at it as, oh, it's just a boat hitting a bridge. They're going to say, it's like the movie. And now they have all these other stories that lead them down these different paths. That's how the propaganda works. So they use the movie to make them suggestible for whatever they're going to fake. Crew of cargo ship lost its power and collided with bridge. They're all Indian. I've seen this mentioned several times, which makes me think, and I've actually seen it, the right wing is going to say something about uh, non-Americans, DEI, etc. As per ship company management, Synergy, crew of 22 and Dali are all Indian. Again, they had to put that out there. And they've been talking about DEI for months. And to me, this alone suggests some kind of a staged event. The idea of immigrants being a threat, of non-whites being in the control of anything like Boeing. They're saying, oh, Boeing disasters and the I think someone from Boeing recently stepped down. My point being, this is on the backdrop of that. So you have a few things. You've got last year, or a couple of years, you've got the train derailment starting with Palestine, Ohio. Then we have the planes, the Boeing stuff. Dave Calhoun, Boeing CEO, steps down. So what are the odds? This is just like leave the world behind. 
the plane situation, the boat situation, and DEI being thrown into this is what I'm suggesting is kind of significant. We'll see. I mean, I have seen I have seen some indications that I'm right on this, but September 13th, 1814, Francis Scott Key witnessed the British defeat at the Battle of Fort McHenry during the War of 1812. The poem became the national anthem. Now this is posted, this is good, this is by Leo Biddle, he posted this. Earlier this month, a building collapsed in Baltimore after being struck by a car in what the media called an unreal scene. And I'm looking at this scene where this car is knocking a building over and it's nicely lit like on the right with these warm kind of orange colors and there's some graffiti it's not an ugly picture in fact i think it looks kind of like a surrealistic scene it looks like a dolly but the fact that it's in baltimore and the media called it unreal we frequently see these psyops referred to as surreal unreal like a movie in fact the mayor said this one the mayor of baltimore came out and he said that this was like a movie yeah, here we go. I actually have an, an, an audio bite of it. We, this is predictable. You can tell if it's a PSYOP, somebody's going to come out and say it was just like a movie. This is your... Well, this is a, a tragedy that you can never imagine, right? And uh, I was awake when Chief Wallace called me, but never would you think that you would see, physically see, the key bridge tumble down like that. It looked like something out of an action movie. And you just... I saw a little duper's delight there. It looked like something out of an action movie. Now, I don't know if Leave the World Behind is an action movie, but I guess it kind of is. It has those elements. And I think we're also kind of in the same month. When, when did we have the Evergreen cargo ship disaster? That was in March of 2021. March 23rd. I mean, we, we were looking at what also seems to be some kind of recycled news story. Recycled theme, anyway. Okay, continuing. Mango Penguin says, I wonder if the containers are empty or loaded. They were probably filled with children. Isn't that what the Q and honors would say? That Trump and the White Hats uh, steered it into the bridge in order to rescue the children, and now those children are being reunited with their families in the tents that are supposedly being used for COVID patients. I mean, they, they had this whole story about the rescue children. Phil LeBlanc says, Netflix Nostradamus. Yeah, if you want to know the future, watch Netflix. If you want to know what's on the news today and what's going to be on the news tomorrow, watch Netflix. If you want to read on the zeitgeist, that's where you go. Netflix co-founder, first CEO, was a blood descendant of Edward Bernays and Sigmund Freud. So they know all about propaganda, the mass mind, how to do perception management in mass, and they know what's under the hood, your subconscious motivations, how to talk to you at levels that you're not even aware that they're communicating with you at. Ted Stryker says, my girlfriend said the painting, the name, and the accident were all coincidence. It could have happened anywhere. Still trying to get through to her. Here's what I would say. And I don't have a hard rule for this, but I'm going with maybe 72 hours. We don't have enough information to say that it's mere coincidence at this point. We don't have enough information to say it's real as presented. Like, I'm still waiting for more facts. A lot of people have already decided and they're already running down these rabbit trails. That's what they do. They're stuck in the 24-hour nonstop news cycle where every day they believe everything that happened the day before. And I'm like, no, you can wait. You can unplug. I don't believe in reacting. I believe in responding. Two different things. You know, I will respond on my own time. I'm not going to be pressured into a bifurcated PSYOP taking a side either or. But as far as the coincidences, we'll have to do a very extensive breakdown of Leave the World Behind, which every single thing, and this is key, every single frame, every element in that movie was intentionally placed there with propaganda purposes. The messaging is so heavy. You have Julia Roberts standing in front of a painting that's constantly changing. And in one scene, the painting has KKK-like white triangles in the background, like clan hoods, and she's wearing a clan hood in one of the images. It's just too perfectly... It's almost ham-fisted, anyway, but it's just too full of, of 
references to contemporary news and things to happen in the future, and it's been consistently pointed out by the masses who are the target of it, which says it's effective, that it's working. Okay, let's continue going through your comments. Angle of Elevation said maybe Diddy hacked the ship. Yeah, someone had pointed that out. Ship had the same flag as Leave the World Behind, says Kevin Mooring. Now, it was going to Sri Lanka. Their flag has a, a lion, which maybe doesn't mean anything, but there is a white lion thing. P-Trip is catching up at two times the speed. I'll talk slower for 30 seconds or so, or a couple, oh, two minutes, and I'll let you catch up. Angle of Elevation, good comment there, says, Who was on the crew of the ship? Steven Seagal would have stopped it. Uh, they said there were 22 people. Now, I, I haven't done a deep dive into the crew or into any of these other narratives other than just to point out that these are the predictable ways that people are going to interpret these things. Now, I, I do find a lot of this stuff interesting. Uh, Psygirl says, America is becoming paranoid central. It's exponential. And it's true. But I think it's healthy. The widespread disbelief is healthy. But, as I mentioned earlier, it's being misdirected by controlled opposition. And the only uncontrolled opposition would actually be us. Okay, let's see. This is another thing that's worth kind of bringing up at this point. On July 8th, 2022, there was supposed to be an exercise called Cyber Polygon. Cyber Polygon was going to be an exercise, like a tabletop type thing, for the people who would need to be attached to this scenario to learn how to handle widespread outages, power outages, hacking, cyber war, that kind of thing. Well, they canceled it. This was July 8th, 2022. July 8th, 2022, Canadian telecom provider Rogers Communications had a major service outage affecting 12 million users. Again, I'm just pointing it out, it's the same date, July 8th. So they didn't have their Cyber Polygon get-together and scenario where they shut everything down, will pretend to, and then respond accordingly, but it happened for real. How convenient, right? My point being, if you have a drill set up, you can present it as real. Anything you can fake in a drill, you can fake on TV. And just pointing it out here how precise this stuff is. They've been preparing us for such a thing. No reason to think that anything happening is organic. Crypto Medium suggests that it's similar to 9-11 and he's looking at the footage and he sees what appears to be charges, uh, explosions along the bridge. I'm going to show you, I just showed a video, if you go back, a, br a boat crashed here, but you can see dynamite being let off at every single point. I'm going to do it again. So we have here, 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 charges, boom. On the copy before that you can clearly see it happened six or seven times. I went right down the line showing each and every fire point. But my point to this video is let's not get distracted by this here. Let's keep these videos going like they'd like us to cover, but make sure you put Diddy in it. Okay, there you go. And he's using hashtag Diddy to get more traction. Smart move there. Dave Leatherwood says, I saw this scene in a movie called Leave the World Behind, produced by the Obamas a few months ago. Now, the fact that the Obamas were producers on it is is not all that important. I think people overemphasize it. We're not saying the Obamas are running around tinkering with Boeing airplanes and, and rigging things for collapse. They just got in on the game. They got in in the PSYOP entertainment complex. They're producing propaganda entertainment. And, you know, one thing I brought up earlier about Mike Rothschild and why he'll never see this, uh, this people, the people who believe in the worldview as described, they're in this box, and they aren't going to be able to see that there is a unifying worldview mechanism at work here that works through all media and all entertainment, that it's so unified that the only conclusion that we can arrive at logically is that there is only one government, that there's only 
one monolithic control system and you could just say that entertainment, government, and academia are all substrates of mind control which is its central purpose. And I don't think that's a stretch at all. I mean, are we not looking at this in the context of mass media supplanting religion and what has religion always been? Priest class and sheeple. Mind control dynamic. It's just been updated. Yeah, the Suez Canal was also in March. Here's a picture of the bridge now. Now it's a bridge to nowhere. And someone has compared it to the broken bridge and the dream by Salvador Dali. Again, the ship called Dali, kind of interesting connection there. Destined for Sri Lanka. Yeah, this guy is saying dynamite. Let's see what he has to say here. Oh, same one. And look, by the way, could be dynamite, could easily be CGI. It could be pre-produced footage. We don't need to, to you know, look into, is it thermite, space lasers? All of that goes down the route of this notion that this was an attack and they just did it, that it wasn't planned. I'm suggesting controlled demolition. Mango Penguin says, many people think I'm delusional. They are unwitting spectators. Well, they're going to conclude that, and it's nothing personal even. It, you have to consider their frame of reference, and that's why I bring this up. People in Normieville will only communicate to you at that level. If you're from Woke Town, they're going to think you're high strung. And the people in Woke Town are going to think the people in Normieville are a bunch of sleepers, apathetic, and maybe even tacitly supporting an unjust system and therefore reprehensible. Similarly, the people in Trutherville will look down on Normieville. So, I mean, it goes both ways. It's frames, frames of reference, that is. And from the mainstream media perspective, anybody suggesting this stuff isn't real looks crazy. They look crazier than truthers, crazier than wokers, in fact. My point is, you cannot even, and why would you, communicate to them about this um, without considering where they're coming from and how they're going to process that information. They may be visually illiterate. They may be incapable of discerning real from fake. And what's more, They've already given authority over their own mind to the screen. That's the main thing. They have already said to themselves, self-gaslighting, if what I perceive differs from what is being televised, I'm going to default to the screen's version over my own. If the default is their version and not yours, they control your mind. And that's true for pretty much everybody. Okay, let's continue through the notes here. Jay Anderson said something interesting. Now, I don't believe this, but it raises a very interesting point. He's with Project Unity. Quote, I'm told there are special groups in the AI quantum computer industry with privileged access who believe AI has been unleashed in an unstoppable way, that our reality will shift, quake without warning, and our frame of reference for what constitutes reality is no longer anchored. Now, this is, again, coming from a, a kind of a normie perspective and a, someone with a fundamental uh, misunderstanding of what media is, obviously. But my point being, the mainstream media is our collective reality anchor. He says, our frame of reference for what constitutes reality is no longer anchored. So the idea of a frame of reference, well, the one that we all share, the consensus, is the MSM. And the more they screw that up, the more incoherent they make it, the more people fight over what the basic picture is, the less anchored we are. We're not on the same sheet. We're not in a state of peace. And this is by design, of course. Someone asked me who is behind it all, and I think it's a waste of time to go chase red herrings. At this point, it's not a who done it, it's a what is it. And this event, as with all events on the world stage, was done by the monolithic government media complex, which holds the world enthralled and entrained to a nonstop 
mind war operation. Again, this goes back to Edward Bernays. We can look back at the success that they bragged about having um, mass mind control, the massified mind, turning this into a Truman show with every single person, a foolish Truman following along with their scripts in a closed system for their mind. It works. It's, it's, it's kind of paradoxical because they have achieved world peace through the mechanism of this inner mind war. Copesthetic became a member, Blue Wrench Lodge. Gifted five elephant tusks has received a Blue Wrench. Evolvement, Blue Wrench, Sleepy Random. This is where it's at, and Case One have all received the Blue Wrench. If you don't know the backstory to the Blue Wrench, it's simply that in the early days of YouTube, well, not the early days, but the early days of YouTube becoming the center for the NASA critique that the so-called flat earthers were bringing about. You know, at that time, we couldn't even have rational conversations questioning the news without being flooded by trolls. So I started this kind of new procedure where I was like, you know what, the only thing we can do is ban them. But I can't spend my time and evening banning all the trolls. So what I did is I made everybody a mod. Everybody got a blue wrench, and the policy was ban everybody you don't recognize. And if they're legitimate and they're acting in good faith they can email me and I will pull them out of the dungeon give them a wrench once you have one you can't be banned so it improved the quality of the chat room and it gave everybody the capability of posting links so now we have a membership based live stream right there in full view of the trolls and they couldn't do anything about it and um, eventually they shut us down and then YouTube kind of made that a part of their own infrastructure but we kind of started it so the wrenches represent uh, you know the I guess the safe space that we have created for the free flow of ideas an armed society is a polite society joined by Lord Dorkington thank you for joining All right, let's continue Francis Scott Key we have some more tie-ins we'll get into Definitely some more. There's just so much going on here. We'll get into the Diddy a little bit here. So he tried to tell us how his story would end in 1997. Let me play this short video. This is Diddy in 1997 getting on a plane, being chased away by police, and this is kind of what happened yesterday. Oh man, you got some visitors, dog. And this is him going to his little Epstein Island situation. There you go. Now, I don't know what to make of this story. Um, I find it believable. But we'll see. I'm withholding judgment on it, but I'm interested in other people's opinions. But that's from Diddy himself. Uh, Lori, a.k.a. Radical Skeptic, found this. A Trump connection to the Crocus City Hall hoax. Here he is, 2013 Miss Universe pageant. She notes, parenthetically, strange he hasn't aged. Echo Star, um, Charlie says, we might be living in a semaculum. Oh, yeah, that's right. The unmooring weirdness is to solve. Yeah, that, that's what's happening here. The unmooring, the, the, uh, there's no, there's no, like, center of objectivity. There's no agreed upon reality. And this is pretty much by design. You know, this is like, you have the official version and then everybody else automatically rejects it. But the fact is, the official version is demonstrably false and fake and phony and augmented. It's hyperstitious. This is all by design. And they want the so-called truthers, the people's media, to emerge because they control it. All right, Flatlander Montgomery, thank you very much. We have a number of people becoming members all of a sudden. Austin 108, gifted by Violet. 
Dynamo Hum, it's Snoopy, D. Brooks, the newest members here of the Infinite Plane Society YouTube channel. And by the way, I often delete these videos right after for obvious reasons, but you will get them via email on every other platform. Here's a clip with Cat Williams just a few months ago where he said that all these blank 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 deviants will catch hell in 2024. It doesn't matter if you're Diddy or whoever, lies will be exposed. So let me play this clip. This is Cat Williams. This is a little prophetic. One side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. All right. Well, this has aged quite well. Oh, we'll see. I mean, we're still waiting. I mean, I guess innocent till proven guilty. I mean, that's how it's supposed to work. Now, let's get back into this. Yeah, emotional Baltimore mayor urges prayers after Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. Quote, it looked like something out of an action movie. I want to get into the conversation I had with Mike Rothschild. Now, here's something. This was a uh, Synchro Morpheus posted this. Francis Scott Key and the White Lion ship referenced in Leave the World Behind are connected. So we found some connections here. A monument to Key was commissioned by a San Francisco businessman who donated $60,000 for this statue of Francis Scott Key to be raised in Golden Gate Park. So this was the first memorial in the nation to commemorate Francis Scott Key. Now, the city allocated $140,000 to renovate it, and this monument was later toppled during the BLM protests. And so this, not only was it toppled, and this is Francis Scott Key, National Anthem, but it was replaced by 350 black steel sculptures, each one representing one of the kidnapped slaves that arrived in 1619. And again, the movie Leave the World Behind references 1619 and the White Lion, which is, that's the year that it arrived. So we do have a connection with the, the boat crashing into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, Francis Scott Key taken down by BLM, which is largely motivated by the thinking that goes into what you would call the, the 1619 project. In fact, I have an image here of director Spike Lee hanging out with Colin Kaepernick at a basketball game. And, and Kaepernick is notable here because he's the one who was you know, kneeling during the national anthem, which caused him to be blackballed. And here he is with Spike Lee wearing a 1619 on his hat. Again, this is a reference to this dynamic they've set up between 1619 and 1776, two different views of America, the progressive and the trad right, but highlighted in 2020. So again, the riots of 2020, BLM, on behalf of the 1619 Project motivated you know, ideology, you have the statue taken down of the guy who wrote the national anthem. And this explains this faux controversy they've ginned up recently over the so-called black national anthem. A year after the statue of Scott Key in France, uh, San Francisco's park was toppled, this is in the wake of the murder of George Floyd, they, erect, they unveiled Monumental Reckoning, which now encircles the empty monument. So the 350 sculptures put into a circle, and they're referred to as the Monumental Reckoning. And again, it refers to those individuals who were sold into slavery in Virginia in 1619. So monumental reckoning, the, the word reckoning really stands out because what Leave the World Behind is about, it's about America's reckoning um, with its past. The movie is about America's crimes, its, its atrocities. In fact, there's a map of America that I, I referenced 
a couple of times here, and we actually have a whole blog post about it. But this map that they show, and they often they even show it upside down. It's it's got a list of crimes that America has committed, atrocities, you know, written across it, and then of course it has a an X through it, which many are connecting, of course, to the eclipse and the Xing of America. And of course, I'm bringing up this map because it's about America's sins, it, it, America's uh, original sin, and this reckoning. So monumental reckoning is the theme here. And I think that might take form in some kind of nuke, uh, the sinking of the West, the sinking of the Titanic, the sinking of the Twin Towers. The reckoning is, is what I'm alluding to here. So again, thank you, Synchro Morpheus, for pointing this out, because Mike Rothschild started it. He said, we've graduated to the Obamas knew about the Baltimore Bridge and put it in a movie six months earlier because reasons. Now, that's a straw man mischaracterization of what we're saying. We're suggesting that this movie feeds into the deeper pool of predictive programming, of themes being thrown into the subconscious, the conscious, the discourse. They're feeding this into the collective psyche. A big ship signifies something, a symbolic ship. So in the movie, it wasn't just about an accident. It was about 1619, White Lion, oil tanker, environmentalism, the West getting what it deserves. That's what it's ultimately about. And deeper into the movie, the theme of it, it's about these racists who are resentful of the guy who owns the house. And they don't, it, it pretty much, even in the book, it very specifically goes into this. So we're, we're looking at a movie that shows America getting what it's deserve, getting what it deserves from the perspective of the left. And one more thing, the author of the book that the movie is based upon, with a great deal of duper's delight on his face, described how the movie was eerily similar to the lockdown phase of 2020. Because um, I'm sorry, the book, because his book has to do with this lockdown. Nobody knows what's going on. They're all hiding in their basements. And he suggested that it was very reminiscent of 2020, even though, well, prescient, prophetic, because it was published before. But to Mike Rothschild's question here, uh, this isn't random. This is about themes. The theme here is America's reckoning. So now for the national anthem to be referenced in this is pretty consistent metaphorically in, in terms of what the meaning of the boat hitting the thing could possibly mean. Even Dali may have some significance. In the movie, the character played by Julia Roberts references how we live in a mass agreed upon delusion, which again, the surreal, surreality, uh, the surreal nature of our world is referred to in the movie. Now, Again, Mike Rothschild says that predictive programming doesn't exist. No, it exists. It's part of the media infrastructure. He's in denial of it because he's in his box. These are not mere coincidences. These are intentional. Uh, we could go into Leave the World Behind, the planes, the stuff with the Tesla Roadsters. There are many different things we could go into, but I'm just mostly focusing on this particular incident because it's been referenced repeatedly. It is in our collective frame of reference by design. And he's, of course, in denial of it. But now, uh, Rothschild did respond to me a couple of times today. One of the things he asked me... Let me go back to his first one. So we got into, a, I think, a very productive back and forth. And I think I'll be doing more of this. All right, I'm trying to give him the best answers that I can. And Okay, one of the things he asked me is, foreshadowing by whom, for what purpose, and with two incidences that aren't that similar. Now, I don't think he's going to be able to accept the answer that I have for that, that the foreshadowing is indicative of a unified media entertainment, what I call PSYOP entertainment complex. Uh, if he thinks it's compartmentalized and he exists in the compartments, he's just not going to be able to appreciate it. You know, sort of like we needed... Uh, the astronauts to go really high and take a picture of the Earth from far away so we can get an idea, you know, the big picture view, what they call the overview effect. Well, for us to have the overview effect of how media works, you really do have to step, I think, outside of these boxes. And the 
Trutherville types, the red pillars, think they've stepped out of the box because they stepped out of the mainstream frame. But as I'm pointing out here, uh, no, they actually stepped into an alternative, which is no closer to the truth. In fact, it's deeper in, deeper into this matrix. Now, I had a few more comments with Mike Rothschild I wanted to find here, but a lot of people are engaging with them. But his main take on it is that we are cherry-picking or that we're seeing something that isn't there or we're making too much of coincidences. And I would suggest or I would, I would actually at this point state emphatically that we have too many examples of, and timing is everything, of consistently coordinated media releases that go along with news that if it was happening synthetically, I mean organically, not synthetically, if it wasn't planned, they wouldn't be timed so perfectly. And Netflix is just one example. I mean, there are many different platforms I could point to. Video games, for example. Uh, video games are consistently used for the purposes of entraining people to the news cycles. The release dates are always coordinated with it. Let me get some more um, comments in the chat here. Okay. Tunac says 1619 is fake. It may be, but that's the year they've chosen to set this framing of 1619 versus 1776. Yeah, mass agreed upon delusion was referred to in the movie, and I think that makes a lot of sense. And the person who wrote the movie knows about this. Like, look, the Obamas aren't dummies. They produced a movie with every single scene, a critique, a comment, a subtext, and foreshadowing for news events, mass media tie-ins. Uh, they're not prophets. They're not lucky at guessing things. No, they're knowingly taking part in high-tech propaganda, the most advanced propaganda ever conceived, where they are engineering our worldview through entertainment to coincide it with their political agendas. But they would do so with full knowledge of what they were doing. You would refer to Obama at this point as essentially a meta-scripter as much as you could any of these writers and directors who are lending their talents to this. Now, Synchro Morpheus said to Rothschild, what does because reasons mean? There are good reasons to consider that the cyber attack boat crash and leave the world behind might have been foreshadowing for the Baltimore crash, which some suspect could be the result of a cyber attack. Singling out the Obamas isn't even necessary. And again, Synchro Morpheus did find the additional connections specifically connecting Francis Scott Key to the year 1619, and, of course, the 1619 Project and everything else. So we're beyond just asking, you know, is this just a lot of coincidences and we're just tinfoil hat wearing coincidence noticers? No, these are patterns. And the fact is the there's an inconvenience to these patterns being there because now suddenly the experts are experts in bullshit. Suddenly pro uh, teleprompter readers are liars. You know, that's kind of what happens here. It's, it's, it's a game changer. You could be an honest person, but if you're reading teleprompted lies, you know, what does it make you? You're on an edifice of lies. Let me play this clip. This is Ye comparing Diddy to Epstein. Kidnapped my daughter in public, and I didn't have the address of my child. None of these niggas that want to say something Travis now. Travis gave you the address, though. Travis gave me the address. Right. But as far as Meek Mills, no. Puff Daddy, whoever, none of these niggas. All you fake hard niggas, fuck you. Wait, Come, wait no, no, wait. hold on, hold on. Okay. All you fake hard niggas, fuck. All right, well, you got the gist of it. Diddy, yes, and he called him a Fed. Okay, moving on. I got plenty more here to go through. Yeah, the white lion thing has been remarked on. A lot of people are remarking on this. Um, others have suggested more mundane things. It was hacked, GPF spoofing. But I'm going to say this. Like, for example, Rinsler says, 
GPF spoof, uh, spoofing that can make the captain think they're on course. The real threat would be command and control functions to change course. Anyone suggesting that this is a hack is accepting the premise that the boat hitting that particular post would bring it all down. That it wouldn't require, that it wouldn't necessitate a controlled demolition to bring it down in this way. Which is why I'm leaning towards this entire thing being a controlled demolition. That the boat is just there as a, like the CGI planes. You know, it's we need to have something visually to correspond to this thing falling in this way, but I don't think it necessarily matches up. I mean, I'm interested in your opinions. Anybody here have an idea? Um, any, anyone else think that maybe uh, maybe that one boat might not have been enough and they wouldn't want to take the risk of not having the whole thing fall if that was their purpose? Okay, I'm going to scroll through my Twitter feed. I had a number of things I wanted to get to. We also are live on Twitter. We have an account called IPS Think Tank. Michael Letts says, How long have they been preparing for the obvious demolition of the Francis Scott Key Bridge? What are they preparing for now? See, this is smart. Look for what they're doing drills on if you want to know what's coming. Colorado Springs Hospital teams up with FBI for bioterror drill. There's also drills going on for dirty bombs delivered by drones requiring people locking down because of fallout all right moving on this is an image from the movie Roadhouse I kind of mentioned this yesterday uh, Jake Gyllenhaal plays Donnie Darko and that movie contains copious predictive programming for 2020 for September the 11th and in the role of Donnie Darko in a predictive programming subtext kind of way he's referencing Donald Trump's world stage persona uh, Donnie Darko, Donald Darko, and it's replete with symbolism, coronas, even stuff in Donnie Darko about um, pedos being exposed, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Joe Biden's reference, because he was running for president in the year that Donnie Darko takes place. But this movie, Roadhouse, just came out, and I, I watched it to see if it would have any sort of foreshadowing, or if it would even have consistent symbolism with what we've seen attached to Jake Gyllenhaal. And, you know, interestingly, he's in the movie he's compared to a storybook character called uh, Waco Wade. So Waco, which is where Trump kicked off his second campaign, his, his comeback campaign. So there's a Waco thing automatically connected with Dave Koresh, 33-year-old, thought he was Jesus, all that stuff. But the character Waco Wade he's compared to is in a book called Death at Double Cross. And Double Cross is another second coming reference, XX, just like TT. Uh, four four, and here's Jake Gyllenhaal exhibiting the one eye symbolism at the end of the movie. And I'd mentioned this, and I just wanted to show this because we also saw the same image at the Crocus Theater, and this is all foreshadowing, attaching the one eye symbolism to this story of Trump, and this meta scripted narrative attached to his world stage persona, which we haven't seen the end of it. You know, he's entering into his Biff Tannen phase. Going through some comments, uh, AJ206 says, Mike Rothschild isn't going to want to do another interview with you. No, of course not. And I've actually tried to communicate with him again about this whole thing we talked about before. I mean, he's the world's foremost expert on QAnon and conspiracy theories. And much of his criticism is, is pretty valid, but it's where he's coming from. You know, he's mainstream and he's criticizing mainstream plus. And it's it's not really a valid criticism from that perspective. And he's too boxed in, obviously, uh, to understand what we're even saying. Because they're existing in a world where the screen is an authority. They've just accepted that as implicit. Again, I'm just scrolling through my Twitter feed to make sure we haven't missed anything. People have been sending me things all day. I'm ignoring a lot of the Gematria stuff. This name adds to that because there's too many calculators. I've seen some that are compelling, but if you're using multiple calculators, I'm just going to 
ignore it and rule it out because it opens the door to proving yourself right because you can't prove yourself wrong because you've given yourself too many shots. It's what they call the Texas sharpshooter fallacy where you shoot many, many rounds, but you only draw the target after the fact and you only draw it around a close group of hits. And this creates the false perception that you're exceedingly accurate. And my contention here, of course, is that these people using multiple calculators are always right because they can't be wrong. All right, I'm going to open up phones here in just a moment if anyone else has anything. I'm not going to spend time on a lot of this other stuff I want to get to later, like Nick Fuentes running wild, doing this sort of this combination Body language wise, I think he's trying to present himself like Trump, but then his rhetoric's all Hitler, but it also comes off as parody, and I find it hard to believe this character, but the America First crowd is out here preaching Hitler and chanting Christ is King. I'll just play a clip just so you can see where their heads are at. There you have it. Comical. The antics of the 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 far right. I don't believe any of these characters are legitimate. Candace Owens. These are actors. They don't believe what they say. I, I find it pretty obvious that we're looking at Pose. Parodies of extremism. Meme promulgators. They just feed memes into them. Here's your memes for the day. Popularize these. All right, phone is open if you want to call in, 505-349-0420. So Mike Rothschild says to me, well, that's not what happens in Leave the World Behind. The freighter grounds on the beach, doesn't hit a bridge. My response to him was this. You're smarter than this. Predictive programming is about themes. You got cyber attacks, cargo ships crashing, supply disruptions, narrative building themes that repeat propaganda messages until they're staged on the news, which makes it real in a hyperstitious sense. Now again, I don't expect any response to that. And I'm not trying to convince them. I'm not trying to convince people in Normieville to agree with me. There's no point. Now I had an article about this particular subject recently I put out there mentioning Rothschild. And I don't mean to necessarily focus on him. However, he is the world's foremost authority on the subject. He has testified to Congress about Q. And when he says, quote, the entire concept is non-existent, referring to how during the AT&T outage, people compared it to leave the world behind. I'm saying this is evidence of the success of the program. It's so successful that it is people's frame of reference as they wanted it to be, which means they're being steered. But he says, the cell phone outage has people regurgitating conspiracy theories about leave the world behind and predictive programming which doesn't exist. And he just flat out denies that it exists. He's in a state of denial about it. And it's, it's not something you can just debate away. You, you can ignore it. You can minimize it. You can, you can even argue claim by claim and that's where it would get interesting because that's when we get into the conspicuous timing uh, here I have a thumbnail on this article Mike Rothschild is in denial of predictive programming and I have Netflix with a crystal ball and then I think you also have to take into account the history of Netflix Edward Bernays and we you know can't be ignorant about what media has always been and how consolidated it is and those of you who know about the fakery above know how monolithic it is and that's I think the hardest part to understand or to recognize if you're in the Normieville box or Trutherville box is how it's the big lies that unify us we can fight over 99 political footballs but if they have us agreeing on certain big lies they pretty much control the set 
But let me get into this. A few examples. Much of the disaster film scenarios have been co coincidentally manifesting on the nightly news. One more thing. The Netflix version came out on 12.8, and people pointed out the bridge thing happens at 1.28. But it was released um, in theaters on 11.22. 11-22-23, 11-22, JFK date, and it took place in zip code 11963. So you have these head wound, JFK kind of assassination stuff thrown in there. But then there's more. Uh, so far since that movie has come out, there have been many airline incidents, planes falling apart mid-flight, doors falling off, planes burning in mid-air. You had a massive Tesla recall. 1.6, 16 million cars, was it? But this was a Tesla recall over the autopilot malfunction. Then you have mysterious communication blackouts that they said, oh yeah, this was caused by Class X solar flares or possibly Chinese EMP balloons or Russian space nukes. So you can't say life isn't imitating psyops or life isn't imitating art, excuse me. Life is definitely, coincidentally, eerily following these things consistently. Look at Palestine, Ohio, train derailment happens right after white noise and it's so coincidental that many of the extras from white noise had to be evacuated from their hometown when it happened in real life so you went from extras to what crisis actors that would be the my th my thinking on it but now continuing here um, I'm suggesting that predictive programming is simply repetition and conditioning I don't think it's synchronicity I don't think it's God I don't think it's the Demiurge or the Devil or AI. I don't think it requires a highly sophisticated computer beyond anything we can understand. A lot of people want to reach for the most complex explanation for what I think is quite simple. They're bending the news. They saturate us with themes. They paint the zeitgeist. And it just so happens to be the case that Leave the World Behind is one of the clearest examples of this in recent times. I think the upcoming Civil War will be comparable. So here's a website from, or a, this is a, an article I picked up on a website from National Library of Medicine, National Center for Biotechnology Information. It says, repetition can affect beliefs about truth. People tend to perceive claims as truer if they have been exposed to them before. Oh, really? So when Rothschild says, what would be the point of this? I don't get it. Oh, you don't get it. Well, here you go. People will believe claims as truer if they have been exposed to them before. This is known as the illusory truth effect. And it explains why advertisements work. It explains why propaganda works. And why people believe the news to be true. They expose you to every story a billion times before they fake it on the news. So the fact of it is, bottom line, Rothschild is not in the know about just how fake the fake news is. He's not in the know. And we are. And that's okay. You know, I, like I said before, it's all about frames. I try to keep that in mind whenever I communicate with someone about something. Austin108 says, I think it's God putting people on wavelengths to carry out the synchronistic plan of reality. Okay, now, here's the one reason why I would object to that. If you're going to say that God is causing these eerie coincidences to align, then all the people who are behind it, the script writers, the mind control operatives, the people who are bending our realities, guess what? Nobody's looking at them. Nobody's paying attention to the men behind the curtain because they're blaming God. So, as I said before, let's just blame gremlins for hacking. If anything gets hacked, it's gremlins. We don't need any laws to prosecute hackers. Why would we? Because humans don't do hacking. That's beyond the capacity of humans. It's got to be gremlins. So I'm not blaming gremlins. I'm not blaming God. I'm looking at the more mundane Occam's razor type answer to this thing. Skyfish says, what's the consensus on the ship bridge event? Oh yeah, it's always um, fake until proven real. Have you seen any evidence to corroborate with the media claims? 
We know the mass media is a pathological liar. We know its stories are framed within an edifice of lies, the MSM worldview. We know that news media is not there to inform us. It's not a window to tell us what's going on way out there, but it's a filter. So knowing that, we know they're lying. Now, was this an accident? I would say no. I, I'm really skeptical about the notion that this one cargo ship could take down the whole bridge. I think it's a controlled demolition planned in advance. And we have found many narrative threads connecting this to leave the world behind, and many others have as well. That this is part of this ongoing meta-scripted theater, and that the key here would be Francis Scott Key National Anthem. So there is a pretty strong subtext growing here. Definitely fake. Nobody died, nobody cried. And there's obviously more to it, you know, the significance of this bridge, what it was used to uh, transport, and of course, the disruptions. So there's going to be all sorts of consequences of this. And here's something else. Lately, I've been using the term hyperstition to describe how when people can believe something because they see it on TV and it's reinforced, it kind of becomes real, then we vote about it, and we regulate based on it, we get fined based on it, whatever it is. They do drills because of it. If they make something real with our consent and our participation, then it is essentially real. You can't, it's, it's worse than a superstition because you can't just ignore it because it has feedback. It does respond as though it's real. And in this case, yeah, it's a staged planned event. However, there's going to be a lot of people affected by this bridge that's now been shut down. Now, every person that's been affected is going to be a carrier of the story, of the narrative, whatever their take on it. But they are going to go with the, it's real, it happened, it was an accident, whatever it is, they're all affected. And so it's, it's, it's marketing. The story is now unavoidable. But public participation is a huge part of creating the illusion. I'm more interested in, of course, in, you know, what is the, the overall purpose to it. But if this was just a real random event, there wouldn't be media tie-ins, there wouldn't be foreshadowing, there wouldn't be any seemingly synchronistic connections, and there wouldn't be generally the, the hallmarks of a, of a psyop present here. Like, for example, the mayor comes out and says, oh, it's just like a movie. So right now, at this point, I'm just looking at all the interesting clues. So to answer Mike Rothschild and this question of who's behind it, um, this is beyond just blaming, oh, it was the FBI, or like in Russia, it was their intelligence agents that went in and did the shooting. This is beyond who done it. It's really about a, a what is it, the infrastructure of mass deception, and recognizing the fact that this thing is global in scale. There's no resistance. That's why I'm, I'm also keen on pointing out that you don't win the info war by fighting the info war. Uh, you can be a conscientious, conscientious objector, you can be an inactivist, but you can't resist your way out of this thing. You can't beat the new world order. Uh, you've already been conquered by it. Uh, the reason why they won't take your guns is they've taken our minds. This thing pre-exists any of us. We were born into it, and it's a new iteration of something much, much older. And this has always been their M.O. Rule through weaponized superstition. People say, like, why? What's the big purpose? What's with all the psyops? And yeah, really, it's based on this cynical view of man. There's this concept, the instrument of monarchy. And you have this Greek historian, Polybius, who said, I believe superstition maintains the cohesion of the Roman state. Goes on to say that it would not be necessary if it was possible to form a state composed of wise men, but every multitude is fickle, full of lawless desires, unreasoned passion, violent anger, and they must be held in by invisible terrors and pageantry. For this reason, the ancients acted not rashly and haphazard by introducing notions of gods and the beliefs in the terrors of hell. Now, this would relate to fake nukes. Why do we have fake nukes? Well, it's a god. It's a god of destruction. It's a god you will all kneel to. You will all live in fear of and hope that your leaders can appease this thing. They reset geopolitics with the advent of the fake nuke. Uh, the 
The plain newsbender is actually references the nuke as the starting point for all this stuff. For the world stage being reframed and merged with the movie world. But whatever the case here, uh, we do have new gods. We do have Gaia. Hey, you got to pay Gaia. You got to tithe. You got to give money. You got to regulate. You got to feel bad about what you consume, or Gaia is going to flood you. Then we have a devil we can't even name because we'll be censored. Starts with a C, ends in a 19. A devil that the atheists believe in. Michelle Castor says, the ocean mural in the bedroom also changes. The waves get higher and darker. Yeah, throughout the movie. And, you know, throughout the movie, you have a, a few other things that kind of evolve like that. But the, the waves go in higher. There's a section of the movie called The Flood, which has some tie-in to Matthew Perry, who's referenced in the movie, of course, with the whole Friends being a central prop. Matthew Perry drowning on a, well, it was actually on 1028, wasn't it? Yeah, 1028, lunar eclipse, Matthew Perry drowns. So there's your uh, 1028, you know, 1028, the thing hits the bridge, 128. The movie's released on 128. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, Matthew Perry played a character, Chandler Bing, whose birthday is on 48, when America gets the X. So there's that connection. And the movie did show the Earth eclipsing the Sun as seen from the Moon. But the flood thing, a very interesting connection there with the mural. None of it was accidental. This is why I'm, I'm really highlighting all those who suggest that predictive programming is not man doing it aren't looking at the intentionality of the specific propaganda messaging intrinsic in these things. Skyfish says, I watched a couple of clips. I didn't have time to look over it. Made me think of the Evergreen. Yeah, exactly. Lean Dion points out, Salvador Dali painted the broken bridge in the dream. Let's see what else we have here. I'm going through comments and also my Twitter feed. It was nice to get into a, a sort of a debate with Mike Rothschild who is simply incredulous, and I'm not even trying to convince him. I like bouncing ideas off people in different boxes, just to kind of see where they're at, how they take the news, and I know how they're going to take it. I know their predictable responses. I know what Trutherville is going to think about this. There's an upcoming major hit piece targeting Alex Jones. That's going to be in a couple of days, so I'll be watching this. I'll review it if you haven't seen this preview. There is a reported school shooting in... Um, probably not going to play it because it's just bannable material. Old news. Why all the focus on this one event? Uh, here's why. Because they faked a thousand events, but they don't want you to know that they fake every single similar event to it because then they wouldn't have a justification to do the terror drills in schools. The purpose of the mass casualty events isn't to take the Patriots' guns. It's to justify the drills. The purpose of the drills is terrorism, Stockholm Syndrome, mind control, MK Ultra, propaganda, hyperstitious beliefs about mass shooters from the other side of the political aisle. It's all just brainwashing. And they don't want us to know that. And it is problematic. And it is traumatic. In California, there's these uh, uh, moves right now to make it, make it necessary for parents to be notified in advance that they're going to do hyper-realistic drills and they want to stop using simunition because it's too terrifying. But my point of it is, that was the agenda the whole time. Duck and cover is mind control. It's trauma-induced mind control. It's, it contains all kinds of elements there. When you talk about the lockdown in the school, how the drills are scripted so that somebody doesn't get in the room because they were in the bathroom at the time that the shooting started, and so the students have to collectively agree hey, they were not in the classroom, and if we let them in, we're all going to die, so we've got to sacrifice the individual so the collective can survive. So it's just all kinds of mind control. But Jones, his job was to make a lot of noise and to run laps around one tree in the forest of fakery. 
yeah, run laps around Sandy Hook and then run around 911 and then go back and do that one again and just keep running laps around these two or three big issues the, these two big trees and pay no attention to the forest of fakery and so here we are testing every tree and they're all rubber they're all fake so we're just clear cutting the forest of misinformation meanwhile these guys are like you can't say everything's fake I'm like you guys are missing the big picture because of these distraction agents so that documentary is coming out just heads up I'll probably check it out but it's it's not going to add anything meaningful to the discussion he's a fake canary in a fake coal mine and a saboteur much like Musk we're talking about fall guys We says, how about a voice chat after? Um, yeah, you can call in 505-349-0420. What's kind of been nice for these last few psyops, you know, the Crocus Theater and this, is that we're less and less having to spend time talking to people in the MSM box. And for the most part, we're outside of it, and we have some people who are, you know, still in Trutherville, they're still over there. They're, they still have a couple of key issues, but nothing really significant in my view. I think we do have a, a healthy group of skeptics, and it's growing, and it has a really firm foundation. And we're not backsliding because of those who don't understand what media is, um, which is generally what happens. The people in the consensus are able to find those who don't fit the consensus and drown them out, separate them, or prevent them from consolidating something that threatens the cohesion of the group. And what we are doing does threaten the cohesion of Trutherville, just as it would any other one of these closed systems, but there's no bigger threat to the controlled opposition, which is part of the mainstream, than those of us who are calling it out as, as such. As the state-approved counter-narrative. March 26, 2024, 1.28, that was the time that it struck the bridge. Uh, 1.28 was the date of the Challenger explosion. Again, I don't know about this connection necessarily, but I pay attention to these things because the movie released 12.8, Chandler Bing, Matthew Perry, 12.8. By the way, since we're referencing the movie so much, the title is an anagram. Leave the world behind will give you Behold the End War Live. And at the end of the movie, one of the main characters does just that. She gets into a basement and she's able to watch the end war live on TV. She's in the bunker. And leaving the world behind, of course, means that. Let me play this short clip here. And I had this song made at suno.ai. It's called the Francis Scott Key Bridge Collapse. And of course, underneath the wheel and stone, the city's heartache is screaming moan. The Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed on a Tuesday when a column was struck by a ship sailing astray. Panic and chaos. Alright, well, there's some somber alternative rock, and it's about the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing on a Tuesday when a calm was struck by a ship sailing astray. There's been a lot of great music coming out of our server recently. Another reason to join, we're always testing things out. We've got image creation, we have a lot of uh, script writing that we're doing these days, all of it augmented. It's one of the reasons why I've been using the symbol of the cyborg, you know, the penguin cyborg. It, it represents the augmented self, you know, augmented with the latest technology. You know, we're cutting, fr cutting fringe is what I call it. All right, I'm going to open up phones, 505-349-0420. Cygirl says they're claiming the ship lost rudder control due to power failure. Yeah, I think there's going to be a few things. There's going to be a lasting impact. 
The Sun.com reported this will spark U.S. food and car supply issues and strengthen calls to cut foreign imports. You can see the agenda is kind of unfolding where it's going to go. Major chains such as Amazon and FedEx have distribution hubs near the port of Baltimore. Nicotrama says fast turnaround time. Yeah, it's about 30 seconds a track. You know, I was actually thinking we could create fake predictive programming and backdate it. Like this song was written five years ago and people would fall for it. You have to fact check everything, even the alternative information, almost especially so. Like, I'm not convinced that those books about Baron Trump, written like 100 years ago, about the time-traveling Baron Trump 120 years ago, I'm not convinced that those are real. Like, those could have been generated in the same way and backdated. Trump might have had someone paid off or his, his, his crew. I mean, they're all involved in reality hacking. You know, I mentioned how if we just said that hackers don't exist and it's all gremlins, we'd never catch the hackers. The metascriptors are reality hackers. And that's why I think it's important not to blame God for it. Let's just blame the humans responsible. Nicotrama says, Richie from Boston says, we lose power on 4.8. The accident is just more predictive programming to back his claims. Uh, Richie from Boston uh, wet his pants on 3-30-2020, and he said on April Fool's Day, they're going to take out the internet, and they're going to drag me out of my basement, throw me in a black car, and you'll never see me again. And I'm like, okay, well then, if he's going to disappear, and we're never going to see him again, why is he advertising for storable food items on his channel? You enter the code Richie and you save 20%. It's like, okay, I'm going to buy storage goods from my bunker, but how's it going to get to me if the internet's going to be shut off? Uh, he's just an old school doomsayer. He claims he has chemtrail lung, but it's probably from vaping. But anybody predicting 4 8 as a doomsday at this point is late to the game. Everybody's predicted it. Everybody's going to be wrong. So since everybody's predicting it, there's no consequence to being wrong. So here I am, I'm going to officially predict, and I'm putting all my credibility on the line, 4-8, massive, double, no, triple nothing burger. Nothing's going to happen. No blackouts, no earthquakes, no Armageddon. Major nothing burger. And all these prophets, all these sharpshooters with their calendar dates and drum watcher are saying that the world's going to you know, split open that day, they're going to be held accountable, at least by me. Nicotrauma says RFB 100% has to be a federal agent. You know, he was um, on the news once, and I thought the story was fake, under his real name. I don't know if you saw this, where he was at Dunkin' Donuts at 3 a.m. with his mom, and he said that he saw somebody trying to rob a car, and he's behind a 7-Eleven at 3 a.m. with his mom, and he stops this guy, stops a carjacking. And then he's on the news later, talking about how you don't do this in my town. I'm just Richie from Boston. I'm just a normal guy. And the police chief comes out and the fire chief. They all say something about how we need more Richie from Bostons out there. And I thought, this has got to be some fake story, you know, to give him some credibility. that He's just some regular dude on the street. Just some dude with a laptop. Just some guy from the streets. And how these feds just kind of blend in. I'm just one of you guys. Like there's that meme with, uh, is it James Bushimi? Where he's like 21 Jump Street. He, he's obviously like, you know, 50 and he's blending in with the high school kids. They're just like, I'm just one of you guys. That's how these agents look to me. They just don't look like they fit in. And there's also a lot of stereotypes. And they push, look, I, I'm just going to say this. Chemtrail theory is advanced by propagandists who are likely paid. It's not a legitimate thing. People wouldn't be arriving at that conclusion and sticking to it if it wasn't being promulgated so heavily. Like, for some reason, there's probably as much money going into chemtrails as there is into climate change, getting people to believe this stuff. It's a big operation. And they have all kinds of people, all kinds of bots. There are troll bot armies on X doing nothing but posting pictures of cirrus clouds and getting angry about it. Like, nobody can believe this stuff 
anymore, um, if you're being honest, that is. To believe it at this point is to admit that you're unwilling to cure your ignorance about a very well-documented, well-understood, testable, observable, repeatable phenomenon. And some people who are stuck in it will say that I'm a fed because I don't believe in chemtrails. Well, look, um, none of the story makes sense. It's incoherent. Uh, contrails have no effect on the environment. Uh, the whole hysteria is another hyperstition. But more importantly, the reason why I even address it is there are about six logical fallacies built into it. First one, loaded question. Second one, argument or appeal to ignorance. Then there's a the shifting of the burden of proof. There's the appeal to motive. All these tie in to a misconception. If it wasn't a misconception, you wouldn't need logical fallacies. You wouldn't be moving the goalposts. You wouldn't be changing your story. It's not coherent and you can't stand by it. It's not the hill to die on, but some people will. I mean, that's the type of stuff they believe in in Alex Jones Town. Oswaldo is gifted 10 memberships, 10 wrenches. Thank you. Rachel May, Vanden Vanden, Space Chimps, Henrik, Nick Fingar, Neat Cheapops, Jesus Cow, Conspiracy Thug, The Realist McCoy, Michael Jones, and Michelle all got Blue Ranch Lodge gift memberships. Michelle says, you should sell nothing burger stickers, the kind that go on water bottles. You know, I was on Amazon, and I saw bottled chemtrails. They actually sell. You can actually buy these bottled waters, and its label has chemtrails. And why is that, of course? Because you're talking about ice. Liquid chemtrails. Look at this. Warning, contains dihydrogen monoxide which is uh, another way of describing water. Liquid chemtrails. And speaking of chemtrails, I had the program that we've been talking about generate a really decent chemtrail rap. And I guess I should just go ahead and play it really quick here in case you haven't heard it. Again, I dare you not to like Yo. this. Listen up, I gotta tell a tale about the chemtrails in the sky ringing me a lot. It's actually really good. I mean, uh, I don't believe in chemtrails, but that song is pretty decent. I made a few of them, and it gives multiple versions. If you want a link to that, get on my newsletter. I'll send it out. You should all try it out. Shannon Jones says, horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was horrible, but in a good way. It's bad good. I mean, here's the thing. It's better than what I hear on the radio. And, you know, someone actually emailed me about this morning. They're like, look, after hearing all this stuff that you've been putting on, I'm convinced that Linkin Park is AI. And I've been thinking, there's a few. There's a few out there who might not even exist. And maybe they just have people do some choreographed stuff to go along with it when they play live. But there are a number of artists who might not exist. A lot of the music reminded me of, like, Taylor Swift type stuff. Taylor Swift, The Weeknd. A lot of them. They could just... This could be. It's amazing how replaceable we are. If you read audiobooks for a living, I'm sorry. You know, you might have worked on that skill for a long time, but it's not going to be competitive for very much longer. Especially when the virtual reader doesn't get a cut of the royalties. All right, I have a lot of emails. If you want to send me emails or voicemails, I have a voicemail number I'll put up on the screen. I'm getting a lot of stuff about Diddy, which we'll get by to, get to tomorrow. So here's what someone wrote to me about Linkin Park, and I agree with a lot of what he said. 
He says, because that AI rock song he played was basically Linkin Park. A lot of the bands in the rock rap fusion era sound like that AI rock song. And I remember seeing quality people quote these AI sounding rap rap rock fusion bands and it lowered my opinion of them as human beings for enjoying such trash music. It'd be like the one moment they were my equal, then I heard the tunes they liked and my enthusiasm for them as harmonious contemporary human beings instantly was flushed down the toilet. These people became AI to me once I learned they enjoyed that sound. This is long before I learned of AI. It goes on to say, there's a few others I listed here. In fact, I kind of got the same opinion. For example, uh, Slipknot, a bunch of guys with masks, and their music all seemed to be distilled, generic mashups of original music. And I did, too, notice that this type of stuff appealed to NPCs. Celestial Wonder says, I saw Linkin Park in the 90s, real band. Okay, uh, Nick Fingar says, thank you, it's official, I'm an auto-hoaxer. Yeah, let me point this out too. Uh, the people who auto believe the news, and those who auto believe the news and add their own special sauce, as in the conspiracy theorists or the wokers, you know, we're basically having to recognize that we have the moral and intellectual high ground over those people. If you're a media skeptic, if you're not believing it instantly, like when they report it. If you are not taking sides on any political agenda or any of these political footballs, if you're stepping back from it and taking an objective stance, you have the moral and intellectual high ground because you're not subjecting yourself to logical fallacies, sleight of mind, and you're not feeding into psychological warfare that does indeed use trauma and weaponized superstition to control people because the elite think that we're a bunch of unruly beasts who need to be forced into human zoos so they can be our zookeepers. Nebulous07 says, why isn't IPR covering the double brood of cicadas? Yeah, I heard something about cicadas, and um, I am kind of interested in that. Billions of cicadas are going to appear in a rare double brood. We had a major infestation. Always fun. Billions are going to surface this spring. I know the QAnoners were all into, into the symbol of it because of this 17-year period. Okay, I'll keep I'll keep an eye on the story. I haven't quite checked on it yet, but I've heard um, rumbles. I've heard the buzz. Uh, thank you, Lord Dorkington. Appreciate that very much. And everyone else, uh, comments, supporting the channel. Uh, we now have the memberships. And for those of you who are becoming members, um, I am specifically working on video content for members of the channel. Stuff that can be safe on YouTube. Stuff that won't be censored. We're monetized for the first time in, in years. Not everybody liked this fake music. But one more thing. You can have any normie sit down and look at something on the screen and they won't know if it's real or CGI unless they're told. Um, YouTube has this thing where you have to specify if it's AI generated, if it's simulated, if it's fake and believable, because people can't tell. And this is all kind of new. I mean, there's always been deep fakery. There have always been hoaxes and illusions and magic, and they've always been doing this stuff. They've used synthetic, hyper-realistic masks to create deep fakes. Every actor on the news, every crisis actor, is essentially a deep fake. A person that doesn't exist, but then they're inserted into the timeline. Now they're part of history. I mean, ironically, the fake people, like crisis actors, exist more than you and me. Because they will be in the history books, we won't. Because we're not part of the show. It's, uh... Yeah, it is kind of a, a sad irony. But they don't exist, and then they insert them onto the world stage. I, I would almost liken it to, like, time travelers. The way they just throw people into reality... Give them a backstory. They step out of the screen. 
Again, another example of what I call hyperstitions. Uh, we're joined here by Pippi Langstroth. Thank you for joining. But anyway, I'm talking about like the visual illiteracy problem. It's so bad. But as someone who's done video editing for years, I've, I felt like I've had an edge on this. If something's fake, I'm going to be able to tell you it's fake. But like, I can't confidently say that's true anymore. Like I can be fooled. And now we're going past mere visual information that fools us. You know, the tell lie vision. They can fool us with movie magic. But now they're getting to the point where they can trick our ears. You may not know if you're hearing a real person or not. So what is your standard of evidence? The only thing you can do now, since our perception can be tricked, magic shows. A magic show will trick you if you're in your seat and you're looking where the magician wants you to look. You are foolable and they are playing to that. They engineer their tricks and their illusions to fool your five senses. Which is why I suggest you get out of your seats. You don't stay in the frame that they put you in and you walk around. So at the, when this technology advances to the point where it will be indistinguishable from reality, no matter how good you are at video editing or whatever your background, you're going to have to be philosophically prepared to handle it. And by that I mean you have to recognize that the implicit authority we've given the screen has to be rejected. And more importantly, we have to reject all the truth or bait that leads you to accept the screen as a primary reference point and then build on top of it. It's time to burn down Trutherville, to leave Alex Jonestown, to put down the Kool-Aid, to get rid of, I think, a lot of the baggage that has saddled the default position. You know, all the people who by default reject the mainstream, who get lumped in as truthers, we're not the same, we're not monolithic. Trutherville is pretty diverse, but the one thing they share, they're all behind this one guardrail. And that last guardrail is the one that says, everything's real until proven fake. The people who say it's fake first, they're crazy. Commenter says, Baltimore Bridge, a metaphor perhaps for the Biden administration road to nowhere. Well, when the trains derailed, they said it was caused by Trump and deregulation, which was ultimately caused by greed. So they use this as a metaphor for American greed overriding our safety considerations and our care for the environment because it was about the toxic airborne event and chemical spilling. And so in a way, too, the train derailment in Palestine, Ohio, well, Ohio is the heart of it all. That's the slogan. So it's like America got a heart attack. The railways, like arteries that are clogged. Then it turns out the left is like, it's not a big deal. We have these train derailments all the time. If you remember after the derailment, everyone was like, why isn't anybody talking about the toxic airborne event? Well, after a couple days of that, the left was like, yeah, this happens all the time. You're just now noticing. But at the time, that was blamed heavily on Trump. Now, will this be blamed on Biden? I'm pretty sure they're going to blame this on Trump. Everything is so Trump deranged. Okay, moving on here. We've covered a lot of the stuff I wanted to cover. Mainly the subject of predictive programming, which, again, is not something that's a side attraction. It's not like uh, just an interesting side note. The fact of it is it's central. If we are dealing with what I contend, news-bent reality, you know, the, the, the MO here is simply time control, time and space control. Uh, who controls the past controls the future, 1984. So they control the future by controlling history, not by steering news events day to day and using hoaxes and hopefully they trick us, but by wholesale fabrication. We're talking, in other words, if you have your general broad strokes, what is going to happen on the news and you have these certain events planned in advance, you simply act them out like a reality TV show on the world stage. We says Trump is such a bad boy. Uh, Trump is not a rebel. That's one of the misconceptions that he's a rogue. No, he's a puppet as much as Biden is, if not worse. There, he's a puppet. But he has been 
presented to the left as basically Hitler and worse. He's been demonized, but on his own side, uh, he's Jesus. And this is also part of their own script building, but um, recently there was uh, more stuff connecting with Jesus, which even him, him on Truth Social retweeting or retruthing something where he says that he's Christ. And this is repeated news. You remember last year, leading up to Holy Week, where they said, oh, he's Jesus. And then they had the Last Supper on SNL, where Trump was Christ. And they said, it's just like Jesus going to his crucifixion. And on 4-4, he's arraigned, which is the 55th anniversary of MLK's assassination. Then his suit that he wore that day, they had chopped up into little pieces and auctioned off, just like Jesus. Although I'd say he's far more anti-Christ than Christ. Predictive programming-wise, you, you could sync him up with the Antichrist in many, many ways. Okay, phones are still open if anyone is trying to get through. Uh, we're continuing to cover this story. It's far from over. And there's lots of other things I didn't quite get to. Leave the world behind as a frame of reference is, again, I think proof that we are correct. That predictive programming is all about establishing the frame of reference that everyone's going to have with whatever follows it. And we're, we're looking at the perfect execution of a mind control system that has been uh, waging nonstop psy war on billions since before any of us were born. Well, maybe some of you here were here before there were billions. I don't know. Another point, too. I see a lot of people on the truth or real side who are like, oh, they're going to exterminate us. as a secret plan to kill 7 billion people. I'm like, Georgia Guidestones no longer exist. They scrapped it. They said, this isn't going to work. Just blow them up, pull them. They WTC7 the Georgia Guidestones in the summer of 2022. Why did they pull down the Guidestones? Because they couldn't meet those requirements. They just gave up. It was like, you got to keep humanity under 500 million. It's like, you guys passed that a long time ago. And it's, it's metastasizing. Like, you, you miss that goal and there's no catching up. So they said, screw it. We're not going to depopulate. Another bifurcated PSYOP. Left wing and right wing agree. There's a population crisis. The right thinks we're running out of people. The left thinks there's too many people. Like, which is it? One of the axioms of autohoxology, uh, number 47 actually, is that anything, any one of these two-sided PSYOPs where you can choose one or the other, if it's a choose your own reality, it's fake. Uh, reality doesn't work that way. You don't get to choose what's real. You can have your opinions, but the facts are objective. Mango Penguin says, I'm referred to as a disruptor. Okay, I think I've covered most of the notes. There's so much more to go to. MSM as collective reality anchor. We'll talk more about that. Yesterday, we did finally catch up on what I wanted to get to about the Russian rocket pioneers and how their early concept of space was synonymous with space communism and new ageism, even panpsychism, intelligent universe, mankind transcending even into these transhuman transhumanism concepts like digitized consciousness, upload into a cloud, download into a new body. That type of stuff isn't new. The Russian rocket pioneers I'm referring to um, even drew inspiration from what they call cosmism, but from theosophy and science fiction. You know, theosophy is like proto-New Ageism, like way before Wicca. And, and so you got New Ageism being mixed in with outer space, and they were, they were intentionally giving a scientific cover to spiritual concepts. And I think this is where you get aliens from. These are just angels dressed up with science. But this connection between the occult and outer space from its inception didn't only exist with JPL, Jack Parsons, L. Ron Hubbard, and these local Satanists. It was happening over there in Russia as well. And they both lead to the same place. The age of Mars. And Newfall says, maybe they did the Guidestones, but we have to wait eight years for the thing to kick in. Yep, trust the plan. 
you know, isn't that how it has, has been this entire time? You know, trust the plan. The big prophecy hasn't come true. Just wait. It'll happen later. And I, I've kind of mentioned this before. Uh, this ties into the, the gambler's fallacy. And it has to do with mostly probability and this sense of fairness that we all have. Like, you flip a coin, and if you flip heads 20 times in a row, you might be inclined to bet your money that the next one's going to be tails, because there's no way it's going to keep landing on heads. Like, there's some kind of balance. Like, there's this sense that there should be a balance. And if you look at probability, in the long term, if you flip it a million times, it's going to balance out 50-50. But there may be periods where you're going to get tails and tails and tails, or heads in, in long sequences. Carl Sagan said that probability is, is clumpy to describe this effect. But there's this fallacious tendency to think that I've been wrong this many times, there's no way I'm going to be wrong again, I'm going to be right on the next one. I'm going to put one more quarter in and pull the lever one more time. And then you're like, I keep putting money in, so that creates the sunken cost fallacy. That you're, the more you're investing, the harder it is to kind of even pull away from it. And this plays in to the psychology, and this is all engineered because cults are all mind control. The psychology of doomsday cults, where, hey, if the prophecy doesn't come true, they're not going to go home. They're not going to quit. If the prophecy doesn't come true, they're going to say, okay, well, we have another year to get prepared. We're that much closer. It's this much more like, now it's a million percent. Here we go, Donald Trump, quote, I am Christ. This is what he re-truthed. And I heard somewhere, I read somewhere, that Truth Social is going to be worth billions of dollars if he wins. I received this morning, beautiful thank you, quote, It's ironic that Christ walked through his greatest persecution the very week they're trying to steal your property from you. But have you seen this verse from Psalms 109? They have surrounded me with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. In return for my love, they are my accusers. Set a wicked man over him, blah, blah, blah. Let another man take his office. So it's about Trump. But anyway, it's a long Psalm 109, but Trump retweeted it. So the media is saying that Trump is saying that he's Jesus. No, he didn't, although he did accept it as a compliment that he's been compared to Christ. If you're listening and you just got here, um, it may be deleted after because some of the content that we discuss isn't YouTube friendly. But if you subscribe to the newsletter below, which is a, a free newsletter, you can join and become a member if you want uh, to have access to any content that becomes paywalled later. But the point of it is, if you're on that newsletter, you get the archives, all the archive links to the different podcasts that we're on. And additionally, you get live stream notifications. And if you want to get a copy of the books, Auto Hooksology 101, I'll put another link there in the chat. Additionally, if you go to that link, you can join our Discord and our Gilded, where we do nonstop 24 7 research. We, I mean, the Daily Beast said that we're, quote, shitposting into oblivion and that we are clear cutting a forest of information because they had spies in our server. But we're not S posting into oblivion. We are putting together a massive puzzle with millions of pieces. And we're not clear cutting a forest of information. We're clear cutting a forest of mis, dis, and malinformation. You know, we we have a methodology that's very well established. And our research pool, I think, is unmatched. We're pretty adept at breaking down fake news as it happens. We are a fake news wood chipper at this point. We're rarely wrong. We pick up on many of these patterns in advance and our approach is largely based on skepticism applied towards pathologically lying media and also internally being skeptical of trutherism itself. Uh, and that's really what has plagued this whole arena of counter media or, or uh, going against the mainstream media is that they haven't been too critical of their own side and I think we need that. Uh, Lloyd Millerus gave me a 
comment on one of my blogs about this. His opinion is this. Alt media is not lockstep like the establishment agenda. Much is erroneous because it's a reaction, and there are many varieties of the reaction. And he's correct about this, and this has been made very clear in the last two days, that the alternative media isn't lockstep necessarily. They all react in a very reactionary way, like, okay, what are the liars telling us today? But after that, they filter themselves into their own little alternate realities. So they're still misled after their initial instincts are you know, correctly validated. Yeah, we're being lied to. So my point of it is, now we have to intercept. So mass media does a big psyop and the big reaction from the truth reveal is, is basically, hey, they're lying. But we have to intercept before they're fed alternative lies. Because the MSM and the alt MSM are in the same box. And that box takes the screen's authority as granted. Nicotrauma says, if JL gets it right, I'm quitting my corporate job and will become a professional street protester. Hey, if JL is right, well, here, here's something else, though. I haven't really thought about this. Uh, Jurassic Liars has been predicting for years, based on narrative threads and really a, a, a fascinating way of examining these things, and I think he's onto something. And dates do matter, dates between events, these things are all symbolic, significant, everything is ultimately templated on their astrological templating. I mean, it's like an astrological story. It's astrotheology in the space age. There is a level of scripting that goes pretty deep into this stuff. So Jurassic Liars has made these predictions that Seattle's going to get nuked on 611. And following that, Obama, who had been out of the scene for years, I know he's back, that Obama would be responsible for Trump getting a headshot on August 4th as a birthday present to himself because Obama was born on 8-4. Now, the thing is, Obama's movie came out on 11-22. takes place in zip code containing 1963. So this is JFK reference built into it. 2-16, uh, rather uh, 8-4, August 4th is the 216th day of the year, which is 6 times 6 times 6. So the mark of the beast and Trump, the beast, getting his head wounded. There's all kinds of fascinating stuff that led JL to this conclusion. But I've been following him since 2018, 2019. And I did note that 611 Seattle does have a lot of fascinating connections to the right wing. The number 611, whether it's Armor of God, Ephesians 611, or Timothy Bell with his 611 pendant, the death date of Timothy McVeigh at 33 on 611. 11-6 um, and 611 are consistently connected in this scripted story that's being uh, told over many, many years. But it's been connected uh, to white nationalists and to Seattle. And so I've been thinking, well, maybe JL's right that Seattle's going to get nuked on 611 and it'll probably be blamed on white nationalists. So his, his storylines are very consistent. What he's picked up on is very consistent with what has been projected. However, I'm not really uh, a fan of making date-based predictions, even though we may see narrative threads that tell us where things are being steered. I stop short of specific, specifically saying dates. But the more we dig into it, the more we see how consistent the stuff all is. And last year was the last time I listened to him thinking it was going to happen or thinking he might be right on his predictions. And I couldn't quite figure out how he's, you know, so certain about these years. But this is the last year it will make sense. So it hasn't happened yet. But I'm not saying that he's wrong necessarily. And some of his stuff is strikingly accurate. And it will sound insane to people who don't have a background in all of his content. Because what he's picked up on is a story that connects... Trump to um, basically the Antichrist, but also it ties in the story of um, Elvis and the symbolism of Elvis. It gets really intriguing and interesting. But my point of it is, the last year it could possibly make sense would be this year, which means mark your calendar June 11th. 
you're in Seattle, have your camera ready. Prepare for an EMP, simulated nuke. And if that happens, if they simulate a nuke in Seattle on 611, Nick Atramas will quit his job and become a street protester, and he can warn people about 84. Because if he's right about 611, he's right about 84. But if 611 doesn't happen, then what? Then we're just going to have to write this off as a flawed methodology. Seven 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 says praise Bob. Lean Dion says the bridge is one point six miles long. Yeah, one six and one one six or six eleven. Fascinating how these things are all connected to the same general themes. January six, one six. Waco rated because of weapons violations, one point six million rounds. Alex Jones, who was radicalized at Waco alongside Timothy McVeigh, Jones goes on to Piers Morgan, and he says, DHS bought 1.6 billion rounds. 1776 will commence again. And January 6th was 1776 commencing again. And who was there at the front leading the charge? Alex Jones. But the 1-6, Dominion, Dominion sues Fox News for all of their conspiracy theories about the election and the voting machines and they sued for 1.6 billion dollars 1.6 billion dollars over January 6 Dominion and Fox News I have a list of, of dozens of these 1.6 things and it's consistent yeah, one one six as well um, you know the Batman movie the Riddler, the guy with the question marks, the Q guy sends his online radicals to blow up a bridge and flood the polls. So the midterms, 2022, had a slogan from the GOP, flood the polls. Well, in the Batman movie, on 11-6, again, 6-11, 11-6, on 11-6, the Riddler's guys had flooded the polls. They dynamited a dam and it flooded the Gotham, put it underwater. So you have the polls being flooded in the real world it's flood the polls and the corresponding characters in the movie do the thing that would relate to the of course the real world counterparts uh, so these movies do correlate its predictive programming its themes its narratives joker begins in a subway and he kills these rich guys and becomes this kind of like a, a, a marxist class warrior and that's why everyone puts on the Joker masks because it's all about kill the rich he, and the subway represents the underclass this is why the right wing is terrified of subways get out of the cities, get out of the subways because the subway represents the poor the masses who could rise up it's symbolism the Batman movie starts out in a subway where he's beating up the Jokers because Joker represents the left Remember, Joker, 2019, they all put on the Joker masks and they start burning the stuff down. Then 2020, everybody's wearing a Joker mask and they're burning the stuff down. It's the left being attached to the Joker character, the martyr, the guy who fell through the cracks, didn't have adequate mental health, didn't have any kind of social safety net. So it's like a justified rebellion against an oppressive system, class warfare. Now that's why Heath Ledger's version of Joker burned the pyramid of money he torched it and he said Gotham deserves a better class of criminal we're not in it for the money because the communists aren't in it for the money the revolution isn't for the money it's to destroy money as as the organizing principle for a political economic system then by contrast Batman represents the right wing and he's been consistently associated with Trump by the way but Batman is right Joker is left Batman privileged very rich guy uh, Batman in black, Joker at the white, you know, white makeup, black mask. The black-white dialectic here ties into the symbolism within the Masonic left, white, uh, left and right, the black and white poles with the B and the J on them. It doesn't stand for Batman and Joker. It stands for Boaz and, and, and Jacob, but it's the same theme that we see in all these various movies, and it's consistent. You know, the movie Batman comes out on 3-4-2022. And I'd actually said, hey, it's going to be March 4th, and it's going to have a message. March 4th, right-wing terrorists. And that was the message. But on the day the movie came out, 
the Boston bomber, who went by the name Joker, had his death penalty reinstated. Like, wait, Batman comes out, Joker, death penalty reinstated. Not to mention all of the other connections between the Batman movies and contemporary psyops. Dark Knight Rises. Batman's hanging out with a guy without a mask, and he says, I don't need a mask, I'm not afraid, and Batman says, it's not for you, it's to protect the people you love. Like, he's quoting Fauci eight years in, in advance. And then he says, count to five and throw this. So he gives him a smoke grenade that looks like a COVID ball, a spiked ball. He counts to five and he throws it. And then it explodes into a mushroom cloud. Now, this movie is directed by Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan, Dark Knight Rises, has the burning bat as a, like a bat phoenix as a symbol. Well, the phoenix symbol, whether it's a dove, a phoenix, the bat, a raven, so many ways they've represented the phoenix. The Mockingjay in the Hunger Games. It always represents a reset. That's what the phoenix is. Burn down, build it back. It's a reset. The dove, you flood it, build back after. So the Batman movie under Christopher Nolan was using the bat as a phoenix. And what was the reset symbol for 2020? Referenced by the, ma the mask comment. The bat. The bat soup. Then he counts to five, he throws a smoke grenade, creates the mushroom cloud. Well, this was 2012. This was years before Christopher Nolan directed Oppenheimer about the mushroom cloud. So now you have a consistency here. You have predictive programming, and it also involves the director who would be producing that content. Like, when they fake the nuke, all credit goes to Christopher Nolan for the visuals. And he said count to five, which made me think they're probably going to do it in 2025. Put on the mask, count to five, then the mushroom cloud. Ryler says, what were the odds when the ship lost control? It had to hit the exact spot to knock the bridge out. See, that's a great point, Ryler 05. I, that's what I'm, I'm questioning here, too. Because if we assume it was an accident, a false flag, which is where Alex Jones, Andrew Tate, where all the Trutherville types are going to go, they're going to say it was a false flag. They made it happen. Well, that assumes that the ship could indeed take down the whole bridge in one hit. And two, I think it it kind of um, hides the fact that this could have been pre-planned. Like if we assume it happened as described. So I'm more in the camp of the thing was wired to fall, controlled demolition. They needed this to happen for some reason. It's a bigger story. And the boat is just there as um, essentially part of the, the production. But that it had to fall regardless. They could not have relied on just that boat. And I am skeptical. If, if it could do it in one hit like that. Copesthetic says, Batman saved Gotham from Neutron Nuke flew over a bridge too. Salty Siren says, should start selling detox pills called Pop and Pray Chemtrails Away. Yeah, that would actually be good. You know, you got Chemtrail Lung. And what would be in it? Would it taste like vinegar? Because that's the thing right now. The Chemtrail remediation involves vinegar these days. Okay, let's see. Continuing down our feeds here. Getting into arguments with normies over the existence of predictive programming is finally yielding results. It's forcing them to embrace really just arguments from ignorance and revealing that they don't know how media works. I could play this clip about this piece of questionable 9-11 evidence, but I'll get to that later. I'm kind of fatigued on Nick Fuentes. Again, I don't believe these individuals believe what they're saying. The right wing at this point is just comical. The Christian narrative caricature that they've created with America First and others is getting to be almost as ridiculous as Q was. You notice nobody's talking about Q anymore, but now it's all this hardcore Christian nationalism the MAGA ban. I don't think it's organic, and I think they're being set up as scapegoats for whatever happens next. Commenter here says, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, the man who wrote it, we all know this, 
Um, the port of Baltimore is a major port serving Baltimore and DC. All the shipping north of the bridge will be trapped in place. No other shipping can get in. So we do have a lot of interesting spin-off stories. We'll figure out where this goes tomorrow. The Dolly bowled a perfect strike. Here's a image of the bridge so you can see if it was really an accident. It was perfect. Violet says, have you seen The Prestige? Uh, no, I have not. I probably should watch it. It's, is that Christopher Nolan? Doesn't that have David Bowie in it as... as uh, does he play Nikola Tesla or something? Yeah, here we have it. Yeah, the role of Nikola Tesla. Finding the right actor for the significant role of Nikola Tesla in The Prestige was Christopher Nolan's most difficult task. I'll have to watch it. It says it's a period thriller set in London. Two magicians, partners, tragic death of an assistant. I've heard some stories about it. I'll probably check it out and I'll do a review. Uh, David Bowie's a very interesting world stage character. He went in effigy form in a Tesla Roadster to space. It's that whole Starman thing. And Bowie is an interesting character to look at in conjunction with the space program itself. During Apollo 11, the BBC was playing Space Oddity. And Space Oddity and Space Odyssey are definitely connected here. And it has to do with man moving into the space age and how like Bowie was providing a lot of predictive programming, a lot of um, painting up the zeitgeist, communicating certain ideas that we would accept in, of course, the news, like space. Everything we see in outer space is you know, it's saturating our, our sci-fi realities, our sci-fi fiction, but, I mean, our movies, like, everything is dystopian science fiction, and everything presupposes that we're going to wreck stuff in the future. That's obviously always built into it. But um, this, the character in Space Odyssey, David Bowman, and the whole thing with HAL 9000 merging with the monolith, it's all very symbolic of man going into the space age and the merging with the monolith I think is a metaphor for our collective merging with the movie screen the monolithic media the merging of the world stage with the real world and getting us to conflate the two which they have but there's other examples I can point to David Bowie's work having some interesting relevance like he had a song called uh, Savior Machine which came out in 1960 nine and it had this lyric about a president joe who had a dream and then he gave here it is president joe had a dream the world held his hand and he sold them a scheme for a savior machine and it's about how president joe hands over the reins of the world government to some kind of machine that cures war or solves war cures hunger here it is. President Joe had a dream. He sold him a scheme for the Savior Machine. It's it's logic stopped war, gave them food, which I think might be a connection to Hell 9000. Hell 9000 was kind of brought back in the movie Wall-E, which has um, this, this theme in the future where man ruins the world, covers it in trash, and goes into an arc. Not in the ocean, but in space. A big ship, like a space arc. And it's under the control of a robot called Otto. Like Autopilot. And Otto's basically Hell 9000. But they stay up in space until the robots can clean up the world enough so man can go back down to Earth. So it's basically Noah's Ark. Noah gets in the Ark, goes out onto the waters, until God sends the dove with the olive branch to say, Hey, I've... I've finished flooding it, you can go back. In Wall-E, which is Disney, and it's it's interesting how they will just borrow from Old Testament myths and not tell you that they're repackaging myths with uh, this new scientific paradigm. But in this movie, there's a robot that looks like a dove, a little white robot with wings, and it goes down to the earth, and it finds a plant. I'm not sure if it's an olive branch, but it's a plant, which it then brings back up to the ship so the captain knows it's safe to go back down to the earth. P. Trippa says, are we still on the air? 
Yes. It has been two hours and 30 minutes. Diana South says, if mankind can ruin the earth, the creator doesn't have much power. I don't believe we're capable of ruining it, no matter how much shape it... Yeah, you know what? If we had that power, we would have done it by now. If nukes existed, we would have been nuked by now. If any of the doomsday scenarios that we have been inundated with were real, the goals of the Georgia Guidestones would have been realized years ago. I think the fact is we are unruly and uncontrollable. So they use weaponized superstition and mind control to maintain the semblance of order. I believe we've covered a lot of the stuff I wanted to. There's still more, obviously. Always more. Um, cannibalism. People eating legs, eating ears satanic cannibals, Haitian cannibals. We talked about that. The thing in Russia, we decoded it, and it appears to be, one of the most compelling things, it appears to be the case that the thing was empty. That nobody was there for years. Nobody's writing reviews for Crocus. Nobody's parking in the parking lot. It's not showing up on Google Maps. That this was a staged event. There were drills. There was foreknowledge. It checks all the boxes. Like, we could easily put up a list of 10 or 15 things that, if it was real, you wouldn't check all these boxes. And this checked all of them. We says not much meat on an ear. Okay, we covered space communism. That was uh, something I thought was very important. And, and here's why I think it's important. Because there's this caricature of communism. And right now, Jack po Posobiec put out a book called The Unhumans. And they're really trying to hype up the sphere of communists. And, you know, it's really a misnomer. Because when I say communism, I'm saying, like, lowercase c. I'm talking about collectivism. I'm talking about the elimination of the concept of individuality or individual property. That the individual is now secondary. That the unit of value begins with the collective and the individual should be a sacrifice and should efface themselves for that collective and this ties into sustainability and the attitudes against free market and the idea that freedom is unsustainable that you're a super spreader of carbon you're bad for the earth and what they proposed with the lunar bases and the mars bases is essentially a utopian scheme a perfect sustainable closed system which is thank you Nicotronis. the ips appreciates the support thanks for the great show tim uh thank you i wasn't aware that the godzilla was turned back on i forgot i plugged it in now communism yeah it's just it's just a, a catch-all phrase but my point of it is from the very beginning of the space program with the russians they, there's a book called Red Star about it. They said we could create the perfect communist base on Mars and then bring it back down to Earth. Uh, thank you, Nicotramas. Appreciate that very much. And let's see what else. Uh, yeah, Godzilla's back on. And what is Godzilla doing here? We're using this as a metaphor. You see, when you have a group of penguins on the ocean, it's called a raft. Here's a picture. So here we are on the sea of irrelevance and nobody knows what's real or fake because you cannot get a coherent view if you're in the box. That includes Normieville, Trutherville, Woketown. Uh, they're all similarly lost and the box is being flooded on purpose. So what we have done is we have formed a raft to stay atop and to maintain a continuity. We have a, a parallel history, a parallel account of everything and we are not losing track of this. We've been maintaining this think tank for several years now. So the raft really does symbolize this gathering of, of minds, this chat room. But what's more, it's getting kind of big. It's metastasizing. And the idea is, once it gets large enough, those who are still trying to maintain the integrity of the establishment worldview and its 
controlled opposition worldview are not going to be able to ignore it once it gets so big. Essentially, you know, the idea of a Kraken, you know, Leviathan, um, Godzilla, you know, that's kind of what we're thinking here. All right, let's see here. Michelle says, Georgia Guidestones are what brought me to your channel. Well, Georgia Guidestones were erected on 3-2-2-1980, and then 42 years later, 2022, they get taken out on 7-6. 7-6 was on George W. Bush's 76th birthday. So you have a 7-6, 7-6, 7 times 6 is 42. Bush is the most famous Skull and Bonesman. Skull and Bones, Order 322, which is why people think that they're connected to the Guidestones. When you look at the Guidestones from a bird's eye view, it did look like it does look like a skull and crossbones. You have these four columns and then the capstone. There's the 42 years they were there, and the way it was blown up might be very significant as well. The capstone. I think there's some deep symbolism built into this thing, but yeah, it was there for 42 years. The number 42 is a way that they represent Saturn. That's why Musk has the 42s everywhere. Uh, that's why Jeff Bezos has a $42 million clock. The four is a cross. If you look at the, just the number four and, and the symbolism of the division of the year, four is a cross and the two symbolizing, you know, uh, severing, cleaving, like a scythe, like the reaper's scythe. So what I, what I gathered from usage, because I constantly see the number 42, just like we see 33s, but they're used in specific contexts. So the consistent use of 42, where um, it represents Saturn, is what I was picking up on. So if you look at the astrological symbol of Saturn, you have a T and a 2. You know, look at this backward S looking 2. And what my contention here like Jackie Robinson, Mr. 42. We have all these number 42s thrown in, tied in with the uh, black versus white dialectics. My contention here is that they're representing Saturn, which is one of the primary uh, gods or archetypes in their symbolic system. It represents the rulership over the material realm, time and space, the cycles of time and space, control, restriction, uh, the material realm itself, the lord of the underworld. All this stuff is correlated with this central character who they symbolize with the obelisk. The dead earth god and his impending resurrection symbolized by the obelisk. Osiris is one of the primary names, but my point of it is a Saturn Osiris, this entity, this archetype is represented on the world stage by the number 42, which looks conspicuously like this. Or um, another example, the movie Terminator 2. A T2 it has to do with, if you look at the symbolism of it, you have John Connor, which is JC, like Jesus Christ, and the Terminator line is the line that separates night and day. And the central myth is about the battle between light and dark, like Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker. These are repeated archetypes. Uh, Darth Vader, another Saturnian entity with a skull face. His Death Star looks just like Saturn's moon, Mimas. But the Terminator, with his one-eye symbolism, he is representative, representative of Saturn, Lord of the, of the Darkness, the Night, who dismembers or kills the Sun God. So John Connor, J.C., the Sun God, being pursued by the Terminator. And, of course, T2... Uh, the T is a cross, the X is a cross, the 4 is a cross. And so you can put these together, and it's kind of like a, another way of representing the 42, T2, uh, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Um, all this stuff is very strongly correlated with the same body of symbols. James Cameron is a major league metascriptor. And this movie had 9-11 predictive programming. And interestingly enough, on 9-11... There was a movie out called Collateral Damage, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, which had billboards all over Manhattan. And there were videos from handheld cameras, which are operatives, these aren't random people, where you can actually see, there's a shot where you see a, an explosion on one of the Twin Towers with 
the billboard with Arnold Schwarzenegger's face. There's the Terminator. It says collateral damage. And right behind it, you actually have the tower being, you know, exploded doing the demolition. The movie was so closely correlated with the general story of 9-11. I mean, this is predictive programming. The movie hadn't even been released yet. That they, it was a two, this film was pushed to 2002, but they had to do some rewrites. They had to do rewrites because it had themes of Middle Eastern hijackers flying planes into buildings. But the fact of it is, Arnold Schwarzenegger was right there at ground zero. No coincidences. These are planned propaganda messages inserted into films. So here's a reference to that. The Arnold Schwarzenegger movie that was changed. The release of Schwarzenegger's collateral damage was delayed and drastically changed because of the 9-11 attacks. But yeah, I found two different videos on 9-11 where you could see that billboard and his face looking down, you know, leering over everybody. Okay, I'm going through some comments here. Tony Driscoll says, Terminator is a time traveler. Saturn is the lord of time. Yes, very good there. Emerald Bear says, I know a QAnoner who named their newborn John Connor. James Cameron has a $33 million mansion, and he made 33 dives to the location of the sunken Titanic. He films the movie Titanic, which has the ship splitting in two, sinking like the Twin Towers, even has jumpers. And on 9-11, he's at the wreckage of the Titanic, filming Ghosts in the Abyss which I would contend is a reference to the Terminator and more ties in the sinking of the Titanic to the sinking of the Twin Towers to the sinking of the West. Now, James Cameron's a major league meta scripter, but the fact is on 9-11, he was at the site of the sunken Titanic and Ghosts in the Abyss is this documentary he's filming, which is like, a reference to Revelation 9-11, where you can find the angel of the abyss, the destroyer in the abyss. Now, the destroyer, or the challenger, or the terminator, or the exterminator, or Apollyon, these are all terms that refer to the same thing. And the name of the vessel he was in when James Cameron went down to visit the Titanic was called the Deep Sea Challenger. So, in other words, on 9-11, you had a challenger in the abyss at the sunken Titanic, which symbolized the Twin Towers being sunken. There's a meta-narrative here. But yeah, Deep Sea Challenger in the abyss, 9-11, James Cameron. Uh, his movie has, his Terminator movie has the nuke foreshadowing. And his more recent movies, Avatar, are very strongly connected with this overall theme. And with in his angle, it has more to do with the world. Of course, he's got Skynet. The AI takes over, decides to eliminate man because man's going to destroy the world. So he's really about the West needs to go down because of Gaia and um, the West, what it epitomizes. Interestingly, so Arnold Schwarzenegger, T2, um, he is the the bad guy in this whole thing. Big gun, big muscular guy, obviously on a lot of... Um, uh, steroids, drugs, what, you know, unsustainably uh, toxic masculinity embodied in, in Arnold Schwarzenegger. And James Cameron said that testosterone is a toxin. He said that specifically. And the messaging in his movies are all about toxic masculinity is one of the things we have to get rid of. He says, testosterone is a toxin you have to work out of your system. So his bad guy in his movie is really the embodiment of toxic masculinity. Super muscular Arnold Schwarzenegger with his big guns. Mr. Screw Your Freedoms. And, and one more thing about Schwarzenegger. Because he's now part of something called World War Zero. And World War Zero is this environmentalist agenda to cut 
our carbon footprints in half by 2030. Well, that was exactly the Terminator's agenda. You know, got to shut down man's carbon footprint. Mankind's going to ruin the world. So much more to get into here. I don't want to get into too many different tangents, but, you know, ultimately it is all connected. We're talking about the enmeshment between the movie world, the, the fictional universes, you know, Marvel Universe or any of these celebrities and and the presence they have through entertainment and how that merges with what happens in the quote real world because you know our world is not a simulation I mean I'm not a simulation theorist however our internal concept of the world has been tampered with and I liken our collective circumstance to being in a doomsday cult, which we are in. The more you believe the science, the more you will accept the premise that we are in the end times. Only you're not blaming the you know, God or the, the biblical thing or our, our behaviors as far as morality and sin, but you're blaming our use of the carbon footprint and the God construct that you're trying to appease. The one that's going to judge us is Gaia. So we have this modern scientific doomsday cult. Elvin Tusk says, was Casey Anthony a psyop? There was quite a media circus around this case, retro auto hoax. I would say, yeah, it's, it's important not to just assume that everything was real at one point or the news media wasn't compromised in the past because it was more so in the past. It has the appearance of having been splintered, fragmented, and now you have all these independent voices, but it's under control. They might have splintered it into a million different platforms, but they're all in the same universe of ideas, the same fictional universe. And it's kind of a mistake to think that they just started. Like, they didn't just start faking school shootings here. No, they started way back. They didn't just start faking terror in uh, September of 2000. They've been doing it much, much longer. Uh, the Oklahoma City bombing. Why would we think that one is real? You know, when did they start faking things? Was there a certain time we could point? And the more we look back, or retro auto hoax, the more we find that this has been consistent. And there's been this bit of hopium floating around where truthers will say, you know, the execution of these psyops are so terrible, they're trying to wake us up. Yeah, they're they're throwing us hints because they're trying to get the truthers to wake up so we can just bring the system down and everybody will have the truth. Uh, no, that's not the case. Because when you look back, you find that the, the actors are actually better now. The production value is better now than it used to be. Audiences were less discriminating back then. Less discerning. Less demanding. I recently watched ISS, which came out on January 19th which has some fascinating connections to the fall of the Tower of Babel, which we've connected to the Tower the uh, Tower of Babel, we've connected to the space program itself and the ISS, the International Space Program. But I watched the movie because I was curious. Is the movie going to look faker than NASA's space station? What are they going to do about the hair? Because when you see NASA's version of outer space, everyone's hair is hairsprayed sticking up vertical stiffly like like bristles on a broom looks totally fake and you compare that to parabolic flights where people's hair flows around naturally so I thought in this movie if they try to do some kind of computer animated hair it's gonna be obvious and it's gonna look faker than what the ISS does and it's gonna be a problem and I thought that would be an issue so I, I watched it just to look at their hair and you know what not one loose hair in that entire movie. The female astronauts had their hair slicked back, tied down. There was not one loose hair. And even the way they floated around looked kind of goofy. And I watch a lot of science fiction. This was a step back. Like, this was not Sandra Bullock gravity. This was very sloppy. And I thought, they're dumbing down their ability to fake space in the ISS movie so they don't outshine the real thing. They made the real thing look real by comparison. Violet says Casey Anthony was 33. 
There we go again. I've been saying this for so long that we have to quarantine the 33-year-olds if we want to save our future. If you go back, you know how many S starters in the past have been 33? QAnon Shaman. Uh, we talked about Candace Owen yesterday. She was 33 when she started making noise with Ye. Taylor Swift was 33 last year. That would have been nice. You had that 33-year-old cannibal Satanist. You had Timothy McVeigh was 33 when they executed him. That wouldn't have helped. Dave Koresh was 33. They should have locked him up that year. You know, Martin Luther was 33 when he started the challenge against the church. Charles Manson kicked off his cult at 33. But go down the list, and you'll see that we would have a much more peaceful world if we could just do something about them. There's something about that. Diana South says, I believe the screaming, fainting girls when they saw the Beatles were paid actresses. Notice how girls don't faint anymore over music idols. Yeah, early PR stunts, perception management. In fact, I think it's been admitted that they use the camera angles to make it look like there were more. Kind of like how they do at Trump rallies and Hillary rallies. They, they use angles. I knew someone who worked for the World Wrestling Entertainment. And he talked about how they used these big green screens and camera angles to always give the appearance of a full arena. They've been doing this for a long time. That's deep fakery. Okay, well, Casey Anthony is not Meghan Merkel. I'm glad that's been solved. There was a period where you could make that case. They kind of had some similarities. The this person equals that person. There are so many of those things floating around. Um, but a lot of that has kind of been replaced by theories of clones. Speaking of, and I didn't want to really put it on the screen because it's a little grotesque, but I did find this interesting article about a total face transplant. I mean, it's a medical miracle. But... Um, the existence of hyper-realistic masks, fake masks, you know, fake people, yeah, they pre-existed digital deepfakes for a long time, and I think it's all a distraction. You know, we may have encountered people throughout our lives that don't exist in the sense that we exist, and we wouldn't know. All right, I don't want to play too much of the attack from Russia, but we have um, footage here from a handheld camera, anonymous person. You don't know who they are, and they do a quick walkthrough, keeping everything blurry, typical. Just checking up on it. I haven't found any evidence to suggest it was anything other than a massive hoax. I guess I'll follow up with Mike Rothschild. I'm actually going to write a longer piece. I'm going to write an entire article about predictive programming, what it is, what it isn't, and something to confront a lot of these mainstream media types with because they're accusing us of believing in nonsense or making these specious connections or it's apophenia. Basically saying that the patterns that we're recognizing don't exist. And, you know, I'm with. Ian Fleming on this, you know, once is happenstance, twice is coincidence, three times is enemy action. Flatlander Montgomery says, there's a cult leader in Kenya, just read about it, more than 400 bodies. I'll have to check, because the guy in Haiti, the barbecue guy, um, there's these stories of, you know, Haitian cannibal gangs and stuff. Well, it turns out, that's a psyop. As in, the gang members are doing psyops. They're spreading lies, claiming that they're cannibals to, to intimidate their rivals. So it seems kind of interesting how they don't actually have to eat their rivals. They just have to convince their rivals that they're cannibals, and they get the same effect. So they, they're doing what the mainstream media does. You know, they're, they're faking reality in order to gain psychological leverage over the target demographic. And it worked. And their reputation is enhanced because you have people like Elon Musk who are like, oh, cannibal gangs are coming from Haiti. 
All right, this has been great. We've been on for about three hours here. Um, this is 3-2-6-2024. We're getting ready for the exing out of America, the end of the world, the apocalypse, blackouts, earthquakes, fallout, nukes. Um, what else? All kinds of stuff scheduled for 4-8, and if it doesn't happen, all these false prophets need to be called out. And I'll be, I'll be leading the charge there. I'll probably check out that upcoming... Alex Jones documentary on HBO. Just a major hit piece. And know this. He's not a martyr. Like, he's not like Trump. Uh, he's not like Christ. You know, he's not taking hits for you. Alex Jones is not a martyr. I, I refer to him as a fake canary in a fake coal mine, but it's actually more nefarious than that. Because by becoming the subject of this one event and becoming this straw man, He's actually helping to discredit everyone else who's actually calling things like it is. Like, he really did take a step back. Total fall guy, in my opinion. All right, good night, everyone. Thanks again. I'm going to put a link in the chat. And if we're in Discord, just look up and check the voice chat on the left. You'll see if we're in there talking. It'll be pretty obvious if we're in there. I'm going to be working more with that program that makes... Music that's better than what I hear on the radio most of the time. And also, if you listen to the 24-7, I'm adding new content all the time. I recently uploaded the episode of Prognosis with Armin Ree. If you haven't heard that, we were talking about tarot symbolism and other things. Uh, symbol literacy in general. I guess Princess Kate has got to be really happy about the bridge getting taken out because it's going to distract people from her story. Same thing with P. Diddy. I think someone in Discord, maybe it was Lickety, suggested P. Diddy may have had something to do with the bridge. I do believe a lot of these celebrities are that self-centered, where they may actually... Like Candace Owens. Candace Owens is bragging about how she's finally free of Ben Shapiro. Uh, she got away from the Daily Wire. And she's trying to launch her new YouTube career... What? career off of it she's like hey follow me on youtube and i'm like as soon as she's launching her career you have this mass shooting in russia and i'm pretty sure her thinking was this is going to really screw up my launch like yeah 133 people get shot but you know she's worried about her youtube channel this is chief crow and the flat earth worms auto hoax i'll put a link in the chat thanks everyone appreciate the comments and more to come tomorrow this is a uh, endless Mind War. World War Infinite. I'm on auto hoax and it feels so good. You just auto believe everything like I knew that you would. In my dream. You know I ain't got time This is